video is sponsored by Last Epoch. Uncover the past and reforge the future in this upcoming time-traveling action RPG from 11th Hour Games. Built for genre veterans and newcomers alike, Last Epoch will have you mastering over a dozen unique and frankly rad-sounding classes like Void Knight, Beastmaster, and Blade Dancer. Branch out across tons of skill trees, dive into the community-revered crafting system, and hunt for rare and powerful loot by yourself or alongside your closest ARPG pals. Last Epoch is easy to learn and hard to master, just like playing the saxophone. And Last Epoch's deep and continually evolving endgame means that there's no curfew on this dungeon crawl, unlike my saxophone playing. I have to stop by seven. Mm. Pre-order standard, deluxe, or ultimate editions today to make sure you have access to tons of goodies like the Temporal Guardian armor set, pet cosmetics to spruce up your favorite companions, and of course a copy of the game itself. That's important. Start working out those index fingers because Last Epoch comes out of early access on February 21st, 2024. That's this year! Head on over to Last Epoch's Steam page to pre-order your version of the game today and prepare for your next great ARPG adventure. This video is sponsored by Last Epoch. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Second Wing slash Firelink Watch Sony's State of Play for January 31st, 2024. My name is Marty Saliva. I am joined by Casey Wosu, Nick Calandra, and Eric on the Wheel of Steels. And welcome everyone. We are so glad to have you here for this uh, special event. That's what this is. Uh, in 15 minutes, uh, Sony will be holding their first uh, State of Play showcase for 2024. Uh, they have confirmed this is going to be about 45 minutes. They're going to be showing, they have confirmed Rise of the Ronin and Stellar Blade. But also, we can deduce some other things because we got some hot RTs coming from folks like Hideo Kojima. Oh my God, mm. he's here. Um, so yeah, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be chatting for the next 15 minutes or so. We're going to be watching uh, the State of Play live alongside y'all. And then we're going to immediately transition into an episode of Firelink tonight. So our reactions are going to be on Firelink immediately after this, which means it's a little, little bit earlier than usual, but um, you're going to get everything fresh. Nice, hot and ready as, as, uh, as who Look, makes Papa hot John's? and ready? Papa John's, Little Papa, Caesars? No, Papa, no, that's Little Caesars. Large Caesar would say. Um, how are you guys doing? I have been in the meetings since the minute I woke up this morning, and I'm tired of them, and I'm ready to watch some cool game reveals. Don't you decide how many meetings uh, there are? We had a lot of meetings. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we I, had a lot of meetings. Like, literally, I had a meeting with a game publisher at 9.30 on the dot, and I woke up at 9.27. Uh, and then I had to jump from that into a leads. And then, and then like, I think I literally have been in nine meetings today. And I'm, nice. I'm ready to... I'm you want to think of this as a, a meeting bit. of the minds. Uh, Casey, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm doing well. I did not have as many meetings, uh, but I have been bouncing from project to project right into this stream. Uh, but I'm excited because um, Sony's been very quiet mm -hmm. and uh, I'm curious what they have to show off because I, I cannot fathom what they have in their catalog other than all the live service stuff that they don't seem to be very interested in anymore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to a lot of that. Some hypotheticals, what we might see, what we know, uh, where they're at. But right off the bat, quintuple A, two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Remember all those donos right now. You guys funded Adventures Nine Season Four live on location. You so now much. you're funding an incredible uh, uh, little creative outlet at uh, GDC 2024. Right after Adventures Nine, uh, folks are gonna go there and and make some great diary videos, some man on the street showing off some games, checking stuff out. So appreciate uh, all your donos, all your super chats, and all your uh, patronage. And folks like uh, Jim Machete. Thank you so much. Been a member for two months. I said it correct that time too. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, oh, wait. Uh, 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 sorry, I didn't read his message. It said HBD to Nick the OG and his twin brother Nick the CD. It is it is uh yeah. Nick the OG's HBD. So HBD, Nick the OG. Nice. If, uh, yeah, for the GDC stuff, if you like Yahtzee being in uncomfortable positions with developers, that's for you. Sounds terrible. That's how poor <laughs> yeah. man he has I mean, anxiety. Why do you make him do that? that? Look, this what? this this year, if he uh if he yells at me about uh, getting an Uber in the rain, it's gonna be on camera to prove that he was the baby about not wanting to run in the rain and not me. Wow, I think that's more of an adult thing to do is to not run in the rain. No, he's just he's just a lot taller than me, so if there's like a lightning strike, it's going for him first. Were you standing under him like shade, like a shaded palm? <laughs> oh yeah, tree? well, uh, Yahtzee, like literally, when we go to these things, Yahtzee looks like our dad. He's like six foot ten. Papa Yahtzee. 
pop, but he's not six foot ten. Jesus, Nick. He might as well be uh, for how short I am. <laughs> Doom Rider with a final <laughs> donut. So much meeting of the minds, more like meeting in the content minds. Ooh. Roasted. Uh, and mm. then Paul with a two dollar donut. Uh, happy birthday, Nick. Remember, it's not this Nick. Is Nick? Yeah, the not OG, this Nick. Nick friend, the OG. friend of the shows in various chats. The original uh, Nick. And then uh, Max, thank you so much for gifting thank the you. sub over to Lucille and Kai. Two months in the Green Gang. Thank you so much, Kai. Um, so yeah, we're expecting, like I said, a 45 minute, uh, uh, showcase. It's going to, it's going to start in about 10 minutes. They have confirmed two games, Rise of the Ronin and, uh, Stellar Blade. Uh, Rise of the Ronin is uh, really exciting to me. That is coming out March 23rd. Uh, it is developed by Team Ninja, the folks behind Ninja Gaiden and Neo. It is published by Sony, so it is going to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive. And that is a game we've seen a few times before. It's an open world uh, action RPG set at the end of the Edo period uh, in Japan. Looks really cool. It kind of looks like, remember when everyone was like, they should do like an Assassin's Creed kind of game in Japan. And then this is coming out right before the Assassin's Creed game <laughs> that they in Japan is coming they took out. just and long then, enough. And then the Assassin's Creed game in Japan came out like three years ago with Ghost of Tsushima. So, like, was, okay, right. just also a Stony exclusive. So yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but this looks like it's going to be a less kind of big traditional open world cinematic adventure like uh, Tsushima and more, if you played Neo, kind of more uh, kind of, in, I would say, intense and unforgiving combat like that. Uh, were you guys looking forward to this one? I'm curious, and I'm still not the biggest fan of of their gameplay, but uh, I don't know. Hopefully, we get a, a nice deep dive into it today to really see like what's what's all going on in that game because it sounds mm-hmm. like it's zones, but also interconnected zones that you don't have to go to menus for anymore. Love zones, love a good zone. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually pretty excited for it because. Uh, it, it it is like Ghost of Tsushima, which is a great framework for like an action uh, adventure game, but Ghost of Tsushima I felt like was a little subdued in terms of like everything you could do. Like it felt kind of gimmicky, like all the side mm-hmm. stuff versus outside of the combat. And this seems like you know Team Ninja, very mechanic heavy uh, studio, uh, and they've done well with games like this in the past. So like this is more of like an evolution of them trying new things with like their combat system. So. It sounds like it's going to be right up my alley, as far as I can tell. And it's not like a big overblown thing either, in terms of like uh, just tons and tons of open world space. And it's mm. just, it's got a date. And it's just coming out in March, which is, yeah, that's that also that's also very nice. Uh, the other game confirmed was uh, Stellar Blade, which we've seen several times before. That is, uh, again, published by Sony, developed by uh, a Korean studio named Shift Up. Who I'm not familiar with their back catalog. Uh, but this is, um, we've seen a few games like this. So if you got them confused, I totally understand. But this is a sci fi uh, character action game. Looks like a hack and slash um, sort of, you know, that spectacle fighter kind of thing. Um, again, looked cool. I'm always a lit, it looked <coughs> very. It's good to uh, be true kind of game. Yeah. Or it's one of those things where I'm like, I see these games. I'm like, this looks really cool. I have no idea who this team is, though. So like, mm. I have not been prove it like if you see a, a trailer for from a FromSoft game or something you're like oh you've proven yourself i, I get that i'm in, in, in terms of big triple a things i'm always a little bit skeptical if i don't know um what you've done before but i'm always open to be proven wrong as well it's always nice it's always nice yeah it's absolutely always nice um so yeah that one looks cool and then uh, a couple more uh donuts came in lampy two pound dono thank you so much hbd and tog <laughs> uh, roll back in the tip jar thank you so much and Zor Arthur thank you so much for the dono emote time plus we still need a KCKEKW uh, emote on discord cough cough Eric cough what is that Heku. what's a KEKW Heku. I don't know I was hoping I don't know what that means know. I thought it might be an Avengers I think I didn't know <laughs> so I'm not I, I have no idea what that means <laughs> a little Heku. Um stuff that hasn't been confirmed but I'm going to say there's two things that I'm, I'm, I'm confident in I mentioned it before Death Stranding 2. Uh, Kojima gave gave some hearty RTs. And it feels like this year, like I could envision Death Stranding 2 coming out this fall. Yeah, the, the last one was much sooner than anyone anticipated because it was a much smaller scope than folks were thinking. So yeah. if they had something to build off of going into the second one, it makes sense that he'll be able to get it out of the door. And yeah, Kojima's been tweeting about it. Like he, he cut a, a, tra- a new trailer for it recently. Yeah. And he was very happy to show off. This fall would um, be five years. It was 2019. Oh, November damn. Yeah, 2019. that's actually a really long time then. <laughs> yes, it's been over four years since it. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense that that should come yeah. out some point this year. Nick, you're a, you're a latecomer to the to the Church of Death Stranding. Are you excited for Death Man. Stranding 2? Yes, I, I would like to see how it evolves what he started, and I hope it's more uh, traveling than uh, 
loading stuff up kind of gameplay. I, I love the adventure. I love the adventure. Yeah, double down on the adventure. Uh, lesson up on the uh, not so fun mechanics, I guess. But that's just my personal taste. I know a lot of people love it that way. But it's, it's weird. Like the stranding uh, has me very interested in uh, that expeditions uh, mud runner game that is also focused on. <laughs> Uh, the, I know they can't see the emote on the screen, but there is an emote that's <laughs> okay because you guys got me looking crazy. Me. Yeah, <laughs> there's an emote in the corner of my screen of KC being a goof. Um, but like the Expeditions Mud Runner game looks like a lot of fun because it's focused on journeying through naturalistic landscapes with a car. Wait, so kinda... well, how are we talking about the truck game? What happened to Death Stranding? I was saying that Death Stranding got me interested in more of those like just journeying games. Isn't that just big truck fuckers game? Oh, I shouldn't. Have, you told us we shouldn't swear. Sorry. You <laughs> broke a rule already. Fuck you. Stop it. You're allowed one. That was my one. No, no, you're collectively. We are collectively, you. No, we each get one strike each. That's not how things. That's not. That is not how the sense is. <laughs> uh, right yeah, I, 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 I also agree though. I don't. That first trailer I've watched several times and I don't know what's going on. But I'm, ex- I'm excited. Yeah. I, I, I love Kojima. I love Death Stranding. Give us more of that. That sounds great. Like, kind of just the fact that this is the second outing, I'm a little more uh, intrigued to, to yeah. give it a shot. The first one seemed like, you know, he had a very strong idea, uh, especially cinematically. Like, he had a very strong idea of, like, what kind of story he was trying to tell. Um, but I don't, like, I watched Jack play a, a, a good chunk, not like a really good chunk, but like a two-hour stream's worth mm-hmm. of that game. And, like, nothing in there pulled me in. But, like, I keep hearing people who basically saw something in that game and that experience so if if that can be refined in a second outing yeah. then maybe i can maybe i can get into it i'm, yeah. I'm excited to see more always love seeing kojima uh, and lampy with a five pound down thank you so much uh with a good segue if they drop the demo for final fantasy 7 r rebirth will you just be playing it on your portal during firelink no lampy because my internet is not good enough to do a thing and use my portal at the same time <laughs> I forgot you bought. Be. I forgot you bought that thing. Have I've you ever, been. Have you used it? Loving, yes, this past what? month I've been. I've been doing. It's my side quest machine. That's what it is. Ah. If I'm playing an RPG, it's my side quest machine. I've been doing my like a dragon, uh, infinite wealth side quests on it. I've been doing my Persona Three grinding and and dating on it. It's been <laughs> it's been great. So that's what it is. It's my side quest machine. Shouldn't uh, the dating come before the grinding? No, you always go no, on a date later. Tasty. You have a fiance. You don't know what it's like anymore. You brought up step. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're single. I didn't curse. I didn't curse. He didn't say he didn't curse yet. He didn't do big cusses yet. Um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's a great chance we're going to see it. It comes out uh, in less than a month. It comes out uh, February 29th. Happy Leap Day, Cloud Strife. Uh, <laughs> and today is Final Fantasy VII Day. Uh, so Final Fantasy VII originally came out January 31st, uh, 20. 20- to 1997 so however many years that is 27 years ago hbd um Mm -hmm. nick the og and final fantasy 7 um and we knew there was a big in-person several big in-person uh preview events for this game held last week a bunch of influencers and and whatnot uh tweeted pictures my gut says this will they will show off a trailer this might be the last like trailer towards launch um maybe that embargo will lift and we'll get a bunch of previews and videos and stuff and hopefully a little demo drop i think that would be great if they dropped a demo but I have plans game, right? after Firelink, and so I can't. I can't even play the demo tonight, which is you funny. will. You will take your portal swear again. You and... What? I swear what? again. I did. I did the f word again. I can't, I'm upset at myself. I, Casey got in my head earlier when he said I used to not swear until I started streaming with you guys. Man, bad. Uh, we got a couple more donations. Uh, Shuriken Dash, five pounds. I'm so glad you guys started the stream. I needed a distraction from this work report I've been working on. Hey, same. I was working on something. Um, Peter, five dollars. I really enjoyed Second Wind. So much new content I've enjoyed and discovered. Yeah, we're enjoying Second Wind too. I, I yeah, thank, thank you, you Peter Ray. You know what? I'm excited. I'm excited to get paid tomorrow. Yes, we all get paid <laughs> all tomorrow. Right. Finally, That's a thing. really <laughs> looking forward to getting paid What's tomorrow. Which, I forgot which what being really paid's good. like. Uh, and Tommy Salty with Tens Wotey. Thank you so much, Tommy. Marty, will they reveal the Switch 2 here? He, he, he. Uh, we're just uh, moments away from uh, the stream starting. Uh, you joke about Switch 2. Is it possible we see that there was there were those those heavily reported rumors of Microsoft a first party Microsoft game uh, coming to PlayStation? Viva Pinata. Is it, is it possible we see the Thieves maybe Psychonauts two coming to PlayStation during this? Because earlier today oh, no. they did their annual announcement that um, uh, MLB the Show 
the next one will be once again coming to Xbox and once again coming to Game Pass, which I find really funny because it's not coming yeah. to PlayStation Plus. Um, so it feels like that could almost be a, at the same time, oh, well, look at that. Sea of Thieves is coming here, so we scratch each other's back. I, I feel like... I don't want, I don't want, to, I don't want, it, I don't want the discourse from it. Nope. I don't I really mean, care. whether, I don't whether really it happens or not, <laughs> I, I feel like Sony wouldn't want to showcase uh, their competitors' game. Yeah. During, like, they, they are going to focus on the stuff that they make in-house, I feel like. Yeah. And that stuff can either come out and they won't acknowledge it, or they'll acknowledge it elsewhere. Yep. Um, Fungus Fund, fun or donates $2, says, as long as you don't say ploppers, you'll be fine. Love a big plopper. It, you, um, uh, it, listen, not, like, not everybody saying it. It's it's kind of it's kind of goofy. I know I know Yahtzee wasn't feeling great before Windbreakers, but now he was talking about boogers on Windbreakers, and now he's out sick. And I feel like he ate his booger and got sick. Yeah, not saying, not saying, <laughs> not we're saying not, he ate his not booger, saying, but, something. but he might have ate uh, his booger. <laughs> uh, you see, it's bottom of the screen here. We are ninety seconds away from the start of the stream. Uh, very excited, <laughs> as usual. If you haven't watched these streams, um, we're going to be relatively quiet. During uh, the stream, reacting to things, we'll be doing some some light talking. But uh, again, as we said earlier, we're going to be watching this live for 45 seconds and then immediately uh, after this, transitioning into uh, our live episode of Firelink tonight where we'll give all of our reactions to everything we see here. So we're very somebody, excited. Uh, somebody asked for something we would be surprised about. I will, I, I will uh, flip my chair over if they announce uh, remasters of Infamous for, for PlayStation. <laughs> What's or a way for me to play them. Masters of I What's don't think they flip, care that much. It's your flip your chair moment, Casey. From Sony? Uh, sure. Probably a Bloodborne thing, which they won't do. They refuse to acknowledge Bloodborne. I get it. Yeah. Um, mm. I think it's possible maybe we get some scuttlebutt of Erd Tree. Y'all remember that Erd Tree? It's still there. We're in the shadow. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's coming know. at some point. Have they, yeah. Has FromSoft ever tied one of their big announcements like that to a particular platform holder i think so i don't have well, any was... i don't have anything to that but i think so yeah yeah who knows? Mm. yeah who knows yeah because your last ones would have been i mean if the thing's coming out this spring we don't know if it's coming out when it's coming out but um you know that would that would always be a good thing. And uh, Shabu again, uh, Shabu again. Thank you so much for the dono. Phil Spencer on a PlayStation stream would be hilarious. Look at that a little melding of minds. And then Rob H, welcome to the Green Gang. Thank you so much. And we're uh, kicking things off now. Let us it's know how starting. the volume is and Eric can adjust. Thank you all. Love you. Are we going to be able to hear this? Yeah, we're not able to hear it. Yeah, I don't hear it in Now we hear it. There we go. Oh, this is going to be Helldivers, another one of their uh, published games coming out in February. Yep, do let us know about audio chat. Uh, and Wilmot with a 499 donut. Thank you so much. I'm hoping for some announcement from Bungie regarding Marathon, but I know I won't get it. It's possible. Next. Yes. <laughs> God, I keep forgetting that's just a week away. Hi everyone, yeah. I'm Herman Hulst, head of PlayStation Studios, and I'm honored to present the first state of play of 2024. The first three years of PS5 have given us incredible stories, immersive worlds and groundbreaking gameplay from PlayStation Studios and our partners. We've also expanded PlayStation um, Plus Shabu with new features so including PS5 game streaming. And with PSVR 2 Horizon's and PlayStation March, Portal, so which released last November, so we're committed to offering new and surprising ways for audience to interact with their PS5. But none of this means anything without great games, like Helldivers 2, which kicks off a year of amazing experiences and diverse ways to play. Today, we're looking ahead to titles coming later this year and beyond, with extended gameplay and announcements we hope you find as exciting as we do here at PlayStation. Enjoy the show. 
Kamji, I think remember when the don't know what would be the funniest reveal we might see. Gears five point two. Five point two. <laughs> this is a stellar blade that you mentioned. Right? This is stellar blade, yeah. The Last of Us dating scene. That'd be weird. Does it feel like that world should have love? Welcome to the world of Stellar Blade. The story begins on post-apocalyptic Earth, where a mysterious enemy called the Nativa has forced the human race to flee to an off-world colony. Players will take control of Eve, a member of the 7th Airborne Squad. Her mission is to save the planet by defeating the Elder Nativa. All we must do is complete the mission. While most of the 7th Airborne Squad is lost during their descent from the colony, Eve soon meets two new companions. Adam, born on Earth, is in pursuit of an energy source Step. called Hypersight. Make sure to stay cautious. It's where the Alpha and AT by is. So this must be 8 or 7. Lily, a member of the 5th Airborne Squad, provides engineering support. Lily Artemis II. Then I can be your engineering support. She puts her, tech puts her technical knowledge to use by upgrading Eve's equipment throughout the game. Here. Done. Something does feel different. Double jump. Time to double jump. <clears throat> This is Zion. Jump twice. A city built underneath the wasteland by the last human survivors on Earth. A whole city underneath the wasteland. Eve is called Angel, Angel by the survivors and is an object of both awe outside. and fear. I'm not selling anything to you. They'll hmm. seem a bit wary at first, but will Angel. gradually loosen up as Eve shows a commitment to rebuilding the city. Hello, Angel. How are you? I see we have guests. I can't believe the Angel is here. The survivors will sometimes ask Eve. For the visuals are very like. Please save my younger sister. Like oh, realistic, okay. whereas the faces are very stylized in anime. Yeah, it's like mis mismatched. The world and the often characters. Her to the wasteland <clears throat> in the Great Desert. Is this like an Unreal Engine Five game? This place has been overrun by new. Good question. I don't know. Kind of looks like it. Because these these rocks, man. <laughs> Can you tell by the rocks? And yeah, and Unreal Engine Five, you're killing these rocks. <laughs> Unreal Engine 4. Four. Ooh, the most of those rocks. Maybe they're going to announce something like this. You will occasionally find supply stations set up by previous airborne squads. At each camp, Eve can purchase various consumable items. It's one of those trailers that's like, it's a very action heavy game and a very Holy slow trailer. <laughs> this doesn't feel, this isn't a good showcase trailer. This is no nope. good. We've released a, a 10 minute deep dive for fans of the Upgrade game. Equipment yeah. And more. She can also, also imagine if you're doing this, it feels like it's coming out soon, right? Like you're getting into yeah. the nitty gritty, like teaching me about mechanics. Yeah, I'm not gonna remember that. Like we better say it out now. Yeah, all this ancillary stuff, like this is they want to catch like that JRPG crowd. Yeah, or even a lot of folks are saying near. I get those near vibes, but that's what I felt. Yeah. will sometimes encounter hostile survivors. Or. Jens, this is the showcase. Yeah. Well, something worse. Eve, what are you going to do after you defeat the Alpha Nativa? All airborne squad members exist for one sole purpose. You mean the extinction of all Nativas? Right? Think that the point of your existence is to snuff out another species. It is not an easy fight. It's fine. I can do this alone. It won't be yeah, cool. Easy. I like the character designs. That's the unofficial name for members of the Eve Airborne Squad. I like the story stuff that's going on. I just I, I wonder how it plays. Again, I'm not familiar with this. But I am studios. Previous game. The first so. game. I will find it. This, this studio is built around this game. I think this was originally being built by like an independent developer. Long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was like one guy making this game originally, and then he got a big budget. Now it's two guys. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Was the Lines of P team also like a first time Korean studio? Yeah. Yeah. Brand new yeah. Studio. So I guess. Yeah, good call. Uh, King and Commoner with a file Jonah, thank you so much. Am I the only one who doesn't like the changes they're making to the gameplay of Helldivers 2? It doesn't even feel like a sequel. It does feel very different, but it feels like, yeah, instead of being kind of the top-down thing, they're going for more third-person action, which I guess has a bigger market. That's probably the, the reason for it, because yeah. yeah, I can very easily be sold on a game based on how far away from the action I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Shabu, thank you so much for another demo. It's cute that they think we unite against an alien threat. In reality, 50% of the world would loudly state that it doesn't exist. <laughs> There you go. April 26th. That's soon. That is soon. 안녕하세요. 10톱의 대표이자 게임의 디렉터인 김영태입니다. 이 게임은 우리가 수년간 유저 여러분들께 선보이기 위해 꿈꿔왔던 게임이며 플레이스테이션 5 그리고 플레이스테이션 스튜디오의 전폭적인 지원 덕분에 그 꿈을 현실화할 수 있게 되었습니다. 기나긴 여정이었고 빨리 팬분들이 4월 26일 스텔라 블레이드를 만나 보시기를 기대합니다. 아, 헤드헉. We let you knock out of prison. <laughs> so this was uh, one of the things that leaked. It's a, uh, a, a, a remake remaster of Sonic Generations. Oh. That was the a good one, right? That guy's, that guy's going Sonic. all in on Sonic. Jeez. Who likes this one? It's what the like, cool Sonic meets the uh, popular Sonic. old Sonic, yeah. And guess who's here now? Shadow. He wasn't there at the original time. Shadow's here to kill both versions of Sonic. How <laughs> have, they, have they still not made like a Animal Crossing Chow game? <laughs> what are they doing? Sitting on money there, Sega. It's Apple Arcade exclusive, so don't wish that in the world. <laughs> Who do you like better, Marty? Sonic or Shadow? I like uh, Pop Belly Sonic the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't played Shadow the Hedgehog, uh, so uh, I like Sonic. Shadow has a lot of feelings, which are fine, but like I don't know if I want to deal with them. I just think it's cool. He essentially has rollerblades. <laughs> like he that doesn't is, run. Cool. He just fucking yeah. skates everywhere. Ooh, I just yeah. cursed. See, it's tough. <laughs> Got it. I've been hearing very mixed things about this. This is a Zenless Zone Zero. Yeah, this is the game by the uh, Miho Yiho, correct? Yeah, it's a Hoyoverse joint. So it'll be super action heavy, but it's not like a big open world. It's kind of like dungeon based or something. What is this game called again? <laughs> Zenless Zone Zero. With a lot of Z's, right? Yeah, like ZZZ. -Z -Z. Gotcha. I want to try it. I feel like I'm going to get a seizure from this trailer. <laughs> <laughs> a lot going on. It's like, yeah, the... It, 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 like, Genevieve is like... actually bothering me. <laughs> Weird. Well, he as he lived watching a ZZZ trailer. <laughs> I'm with the Z's. Is... No, never mind. Not on Switch. I was going to say, is Genshin even on Facebook? Yeah. yeah, Genshin is. Uh, yeah. But it's not on Switch or Xbox. Yeah. Uh, Home Stars, this is coming out uh, later this week on PlayStation Plus or PlayStation Plus. Not on the same. Are we going to get the same discourse over this that we just got over Power Room? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> uh, Lampy, thank you so much for the dono. That cut me. Do you think Sonic was in the Hoyoverse? Well, weirder things have happened. They haven't done any, like, other characters entering Genshin, have they? Like they haven't done the Fortnite thing of Gobble enough. Yeah, they haven't. But I will, uh, I will say, all the all the people that have played Bum Stars have had a really good time with it. So, yeah, yeah. ready to get my soap on. And uh, Robo Knob, the snob, left 99 euro. Thank you so much. If they don't announce a Siren sequel, what is even the point of this? That's what I've been saying. 
fucking love Siren. That game is spooky. Oh, is this David? David the Diver coming to PlayStation? Hmm. I really like David the Diver. David Diver, you get a thumb up for me. I've not given this a shot yet, and I should. Good. Godzilla? I mean, that's just theme music, right? That's just straight up Godzilla. It's Godzilla. <laughs> what? Welcome, Godzilla. I feel good about this. That is a good ass tie in. They already did a tie-in with Dredge, and now they're doing one with Godzilla. Wow, I've realized I don't know what the hell Dave the Diver is about, that that makes, <laughs> that that's a good tie-in. <laughs> I have no idea what that game is. <laughs> it's several games in one. V Rising coming to PS5? Yes, what is it is. V Rising? V Rising, yeah, coming to PS5. This is a, a, a vampire crafting game? Yeah, it's a vampire, yeah. vampire action adventure yeah with survival craft basically and all that i actually really like it the combat feels super good Casey's the camera too so well. yeah this makes me think of diablo so like, like it's it, not it's this a bit game. more yeah i think i'd be able to more methodical than diablo but this perspective makes me think diablo and so i was already kind of tuning out <laughs> like i would try it if given the opportunity but that first impression just tell it like it is. Well, this is Nick, you must be so interested. No, I've, I've put a couple hours into V-Rising. I'm waiting for 1.0, but I really like it. Is that still in Early Access? 80s Jackie. Yeah. Everyone, I'm Sean yeah, Benson. Yeah, it came out in early access this last year. This next game is a result of a very close partnership with Konami and marks the return of a horror franchise that has been with us since the original what PlayStation. Hell? Let's take a look at what's next for Silent Hill. We'll wake Yossi up. Silent Hill 2 is here. This <laughs> <laughs> is not Silent Hill 2. VR sound? Maybe <laughs> I can be like her. Net. Maybe this is gonna be like a PTS thing, a playable teaser to get everyone. Uh... Oh, this stuff leaked like a year or two ago. Dust Golem leaked this. This is a playable, a playable trailer thing. That is supposed to connect a couple Silent Hill things. This might be out now, actually, or today. Huh. Who's there? I do not believe this is VR trailer, no. What's with this place? Cherry blossoms bloom within the grasp of death. What are you hiding inside? Maya? What the fuck? Fuck out of here, that thing is jittering. <laughs> You said a bad word again. That's fine. This is the fun. This is a mature trailer. <laughs> a lot of stuff. What did I do to deserve this? What, they finally made PT a game? No, I think this is just another PT kind of thing. The short message! <laughs> Full game free to play. Oh, wow. Only when it's out. If you say now, I'm quitting this stream. I'm straight up leaving. I mean, he has to introduce it, and then he'll probably end it with that. I apologize. Uh, again, thank you so much for the Konami and Shinko on the PS5. No, they're making games. Today. Yeah, available today. Oh my god! Fuck, I have plans tonight. Why are we doing this? Yeah. 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 This is how 
cafe to black playing. It kind of sounded like it. It's just legs, and then where you think the rest of the body's gonna be, it's more like it's because James Sunderland is a home dog. Wait, I can't headshot this. Yeah. Uh, uh, Robonab is not thank you so much for the tunnel. For Spoken Hill, what was it? It's like a. Silent Hill 2 remake looked at Resident Evil 2 remake and said, let's do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Sense. Resident Evil 2 was that kind of a game at heart, and this is not that kind of a game at heart. I'm gonna play this. You know, I'm going in with an open mind. Yeah. Mm. But, in development, you know, hey, you're making it? That's fine. Eric, thanks so much for the dono. Small note, do not go go Sonic X Ooh, Shadow Ghost Generations. Oh, uh, Judas. It won't be about the game or safe for work. It's the pre I'm excited now. Judas. What if I told Next you game, Ken Levine. Bioshock Boy. Is being recorded. Every it says in development for PS5. I'm going to be angry. <laughs> this is obviously. <laughs> This looks like the follow-up to Bioshock we've been yeah. asking for for years. Very much so. <laughs> I'm done it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I feel like everyone, like, because it's been so long, everyone forgets. You know what games are really good? The Bioshock games. Yeah, like, I really yeah. liked uh, yeah. the last one. Infinite? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, this, this <laughs> world seems to be, like, built around kind of, like, social media obsession, which yeah, is a like really good topic. Thumbs down or severed hands yeah. and stuff. Like, I'm uh, into it. Duck no, Cookie thinks it wasn't true. I don't know. I wonder if Sonic Cross Shadows uh, is timing itself to be a Switch 2 launch title. Could be. I, I was hoping that. the rumor wasn't true that the next Metro was going to be VR. Oh. But also, maybe it's really cool because <laughs> Vertigo's really good at VR. It's energy. No. Well, apparently folks Shot that you've never played Bioshock? Your <laughs> you should play Bioshock. And then make a video about Bioshock. That would be step incredible. Into Come this summer to good one. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Java on Bioshock. This isn't technically the next Metro coming into, but this is a VR Metro game and developed by Vertigo Games. Which Vertigo makes some of the best VR games on the market, so uh, I can definitely, I definitely plan on playing this. The, I've never cared about the Metro series. I'm being honest. No thing. Yeah. Metro, Stalker. Never, none of them have ever sparked that joy in me. Ooh. Uh, I don't Elliot know about that in VR. Don't know. Thank you so much. If I had uh, FMD machines, I would tell my younger self to not make two Konami properties my favorite series, but maybe this Silent Hill game will be the one to redeem the series. Yeah, being a fan of things like that can, can be tough, Kelly. combat is getting really good <laughs> i will say that last few games i played find devs are really figuring it out yeah like there were there were a couple of vr releases last year that like 
actually got some. Why is he punching the shit out of that skeleton, though? <laughs> Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, one of the one of the VR games I've been playing. Not Asgard Threat. It's a, it has that really generic name. I forget every time I bring it up. But the uh, it has like boss like souls like boss fights in it in VR. And it actually works. What? Actually looks dope. It does, like, like the combat kind of keeps looking better as it go. Yeah, it looked kind of doofy at the beginning, and then this one's like, oh, you like <laughs> why? It. Why do VR games have the, the worst names though? <laughs> no, Legendary Tales names. is great. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, they have the worst <laughs> names for... Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's as generic as the other game that I'm playing, and I can't remember the name of it. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Dragon will appear before you. Like I saw a bunch of preview stuff for this, and I'm I'm genuinely excited for Dragon's Dogma 2 now. I I have not been sold on this game yet, but this trailer is actually the first trailer that's got me very interested in already. Just <laughs> like they're definitely flexing some Monster Hunter type energy in this game now. I know the first one already has some. You're going to be going from you know Tsuno and the teams. Uh, Devil May Cry 3, Devil May Cry 5, straight in this. You're, you're, you're experiencing the lineage of this game <laughs> in real time. Look at that archery action. Maybe I just haven't watched enough trailers of this game, but like the one thing that wasn't grabbing me was like the lack of like variety in environments. So at least finally seeing that. I also like that interview where they talked about uh, fast travel and saying like they want you to feel like journeying through the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can, I can get with that. Look at that cat man. See the bad guy? The, the cat. cat. He's too cute to be the bad guy. Mm. Yeah, well, Fluke, I couldn't get into Dragon's, I couldn't get into Dragon's Dogma 1 either. I don't know why. Definitely my type of game. Yeah, I can see that being interesting. First party. Never mind. Rise of the Ronin. <laughs> wow, this does look a lot like it. That's freaking... Yeah, you even have the bird flying around. Yeah. <laughs> いつ this is from uh, Team Ninja. Ninja, uh, Ninja Gaiden, Neo. Uh, uh, Olong? Is that the name of the game from last year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Olong, Fallen Dynasty. This is a uh, Sony published game, though, so this is a PlayStation game. <laughs> yeah, this combat definitely looks Sekiro-esque. Yeah, yeah. Even so does that movement, in all honesty. with that, yeah. <laughs> How did that not kill him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that? Some monsters in this world? Okay, yep, I'm sold. It's got secure luck combat. And Will Long was very good, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, George was the ultimate stranger. Final Fantasy 
発明家である伊賀七と因縁を深めるとさまざまなからくり装置を入手できますトリビ法は伊賀七が作ったからくりで現代の火炎放射器のような強力な演化器です<笑>トリビ法や火炎放射器の装置重剣など西洋の技術を生かした武器をうまく活用すれば強敵にも打ち勝つことができるのでマスターしてくださいそうだね Hey, you got a whole horse, too. a k u m a t s o Ikir, Jimbut Stach, to Tsumida in Nenga, Monogatari, n o k i k a k o s h i n out the horse's legs. <laughs> the winter is old. Some animation was broken there. <laughs> Yeah, that looks pretty fun. Yeah, yeah this already has day chat, March 23rd. Jeez, Dragon's Dogma. I believe right this is a PlayStation 5 exclusive at launch, so、um, if it comes to PC, I don't think it will come until、um, down the road. Apologies to you and yours. Uh, Lampy with a five pound donut. Will this game answer the question of whether a bayonet,、uh, of when a bayonet becomes a knife? I mean, when it's removed from the gun.、Right? Uh, don't, don't let them bait you. This,、okay. oh, <laughs> this was a classic. <laughs> Is this one of your Magic Monday conversations? <laughs>、yeah. uh, hot then, Monday energy cannot spill over to the rest of the week. And then Owen, <laughs> Metro is also coming to Steam and Meta、uh, two and three as well. Rejoice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, a lot of these things.、Um, Oh, yeah. Press releases、no. will come up that say they're coming on different things.、Uh, however, I'm relatively sure this is not coming to PC at launch. Don't quote me on that, even though I just said it. Was, it was, yeah. And、uh, Quincy, thank you so much for the dono.、Uh, Ghost of Neo, Sekiro's Creed. <laughs> until dawn? It's not until they were on the remake. Just, make it, just keep doing that? Why, why are we remake? This better not be a remake of Until Dawn. Oh my god.、It、looks like Until Dawn. I mean, they're <laughs> planning on doing a movie, right? So, yeah. Rami Malik refused to be in it, and so they have to, like, <laughs> him and Hayden Benetier had to be recast. Or, or is this coming to PC? <laughs> I mean, this looks way better than Until Dawn. Past is beyond our control. Oh, they got Peter Stromer back. Shouts to Peter Stromer. I'd be very excited for Until Dawn 2. I don't know if I'm excited about a remake. <laughs> about Until Dawn 1 again. Until Dawn's about,、uh, I mean, it was a PS4 game? PS3 yes. game? Very early PS4 game. Yeah, it's almost 10 years old. Not that that's an excuse. PS5 and PC. They, they, want on, PC.、Nice. they want it on modern platforms because the movie is going to be. Because、come. the movie. It's the、yeah. Last of Us Part 1 thing where it's like an、right. HBO show is coming out, so we got to do this. Did that have a date? Everyone shut up. It's Death Stranding. I don't care if it had a date. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I told everyone to shut up. b e s m a r t thank you for the dono. Good afternoon to you, too. I'm sorry I told you to shut up. What the? <laughs> Who's that cat at? That cat had a long ass tongue. <laughs>、uh, it had like a squid tongue. Are they, the mask on her face or hands? Yeah, hands. It's a recurring theme. <laughs> Were you not wearing a hand mask during COVID? That's why you're fucking sick, dog. Oh, weird. I mean, wasn't he like peeling toenails off of、uh, <laughs> what's the name's feet in the first game? Like, yeah, Kojima's in it is bullshit. Hell yeah. Give us a thumbs up again, dog. Oh, no! 
What, what did you just do? <laughs> you go inside a man's body? Welcome to Drawbridge, Sam. Are they tiny? <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> a mobile base of operations. Are they black Come and white on. inside a baby's body? You get your bearings. This is the ship's armory. Here you can check your weapons and put them through their paces. Am I insane or are they black and white? I'm not crazy. Right? Yeah, no, they are discolored These for sure. These rooms over here belong to other members of the crew. They're pretty much the same as yours. And the shower's down at the end. This is one hell of a ship you got here. Courtesy of the UCA, I'm guessing. No. As I told you, Drawbridge is a civilian outfit. But we do have a generous patron with access to plenty of capital and tech. Sounds like a UCA big shot. Easy. We have no idea what's Don't going ask. on. Nobody knows what's going on. What I know everything that's going face. on. Except why they're black and white and everything that's they happening. value their privacy. Seriously? No better than to believe that bullshit. Wait, that glove put itself up to like shush her? Yes. It's the same like, I thought that was her head, head for a second, but nope, it's the, the weird thing around her neck. Cut she got a little chimp another. on her shoulder? We want you to help us bring that hand the world is together. <laughs> Who's that little man? Sam, would you mind if I join you? Why does it move like Human that? Him. His knowledge and experience will probably come in handy down the road. Yes. Really, Sam? Your buttocks? What about shotgun? <laughs> I prefer the driver's seat. Sam, do you read me? I'm so happy. You need to access the Mexico side plate gate terminal. After we've confirmed that we're covered. What did they say, New Mexico? We're in New Mexico? Yeah, Mexico side. Turkey. The problem is, not everybody wants to be part of the UCA. That's not the plan, Sam. The UCA isn't looking to expand its borders. Just like with Mexico, they want to bring new regions into the network. Anyway, mm. the DHV Magellan's here to back you up. As always, you'll be the one leading mm. the way to expand the network. What's your role in all this? You're the commander. That's right. These days, I'm fragile in name only. You brought America together. Helped it be reborn as the UCA. Made a great again. But I'm afraid the death stranding is far from over. Humanity is still in danger. Still on the brink of extinction. Don't act like you don't see it. No. A lot of things changed after I you. I think you wanted this to be a big journey. Fight Especially big spider hands, you're going to the moon, you're going inside a baby body. <laughs> We're on the moon. We're just looking at the moon. Yeah, it's close to the moon. Moon adjacent. These things were up and running. So your friends and co-workers all went their separate ways. Within network coverage, there's no need to rely on human porters anymore. So after I closed up shop, I went and started a new group. One that handles work in regions outside the UCA. We decided to call ourselves Drawbridge. With the support of the Chiral Network and APAS, humanity will be free from the need to move around. Bots are capable of handling deliveries. He's alive. He called himself a ghost, but... I found a way back from the beach just so he could kill us. He said he came back to get revenge on you and me. You miss me. Yeah, I figured you'd pay this place a visit, seeing as how I've been distributing the fruits of this fine factory all over the continent. Some guns and violence, the whole damn world could be yours. Same as it ever was. Oh. Looks like you decided to trade in that rope for a stick this go around. Well, I suppose even a porter has to pull the trigger from time to time. Oh, what about you? Hey, buddy. Are you just another soulless little husk, huh? Uh, let go of me! <laughs> Pathetic guitarist, <laughs> where's that? the rest of your band? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Uh, Sean, they're not repeating the voice actor. It's the same oh, it's the character. Sound. Troy Baker's character from the first game. Was it you, Hicks? He's back. Huh? In Joker mode. Was it you that killed Lou? You still don't know, do you? Fuck! Everyone gets one cuss, including Troy Baker. <laughs> So weird. <laughs> that's just uh, ninja. That's just ninja from Metal Gear. Wait, did, did Porter turn into that? No, no, Sam, no Sam's behind him. Is another yeah. what? No, Sam's that's behind a, that's him. That's a different another, thing. There's another person. Maybe this is Al Fanning. Oh, that's Al I Fanning. think it's the baby. I mean, it's ba we're hearing the baby laughing. Yeah, like it, it's got to yeah. be. <laughs> This is why you travel inside the baby's bloodstream. Something to turn him into a cool robot. I don't know a goddamn thing about Lou. All right, Sam. Let's see what we can find on Lou. If you want answers, you're gonna have to find them yourself. But the ones you do find, well, that pain you nurse will only get worse. Sam the man in the dark about everything. Don't forget, coming on this expedition was meant to help you find the strength to carry on. And you have. We all know you've got this. Now it's time to finish the journey, Sam. Please understand, Sam. We never meant to string you along. That chrysalis, we found her inside. She is Elfanic. It was filled with a fluid that contained amino acids. One's identical in structure to the kind found in tar. I'm sorry, there are amino acids in tar? As in proteins? Of course. How else did you think that chiral creatures could emerge from it? Some have even theorized that the tar is a sort of primordial soup. I was there. I saw her home. And it was a hellhole. You see, Are there strings on her? I decided to do a little yeah, there's lots of strings in this game. Now, according to them, <laughs> BB-28 was flagged for disposal and subsequently incinerated four years ago, long before you and Lou first met. <laughs> Oh, that's next year. Mm. George Miller appearance. What? <laughs> Hell yeah. Welcome, George <laughs> Miller. Yeah, he played uh, one of the uh, dudes. Uh, Lampy with a five pound donut. Nick, I need you to scream for the next two minutes as loud as you can. No reason. Well, uh, joke's on you, Lampy. That trailer was 10 minutes long because no one could say no to Kojima. Today <laughs> is visionary game creator. Uh, Lampy also, Hodeo Hode Hode Kojima watches one episode of Magic Kojima School Bus. Classic Dale. Welcome. Nick the OG, HBD. Today, Glove movement on its own. Glover reboot together. confirmed. As part of the PlayStation and Kojima Productions partnership, Hideo is going to take us on an exciting new adventure. One that I've been encouraging him to reinvent for years. Another game? Uh, wow. Oh, no. He's doing his own Metal Gear. Like, Sony must have paid him a lot of money. Sony has been working with him for over 30 years. He has a strong experience in espionage. He has a strong experience in espionage. He has a strong a new action espionage game by Hideo Kojima. This is one of my favorite genres, one that I've been hoping you would revisit with a bold new vision. Can you share anything else about this new development? <laughs> え、もちろんインタラクティブなゲームなんですけども、え、ルックもの語りテーマ、キャスト、演技、ファッション、サウンド、え、どれを撮ってもえ、同時に映画でもあるようなものです。え、本作でえ、映画とゲームの壁を越
Oh, look at the boom. I bet he directed that, that thing. He's like, I'm going to point, and then you're going to zoom out, and then you're going to do a cool spin. I would hate any other creator in the world if they did shit like this. He gets pass. He's the only one who gets pass. Only one who gets a pass. What a man. Uh, and Shabu, thank you so much for the dono. Uh, I think Before I speak for go, everyone when I say, huh? Also, RoboNob, <laughs> thank you so much for the dono. Return, Whatever drugs Kojima twigs, I want some. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh, interesting. Square Enix will be sharing new gameplay details, along with things. exciting news you won't want to miss. We hope you enjoyed the show. See you soon. Oh, so that's going to be it. And then uh, King and Commodore, thank you so much for the $5. Guitar slash railgun slash shotgun sold me. I agree. Um, <laughs> that picture of the baby. Uh, all right, chat. We're gonna take a uh, short break. Um, we're gonna we're gonna show you our sponsor, and then we're gonna come back with tonight's uh, episode of uh, Firelink, where we're gonna unpack all of that and also talk about stuff we've been playing. So stay tuned for that. video is sponsored by Last Epoch. Uncover the past and reforge the future in this upcoming time-traveling action RPG from 11th Hour Games. Built for genre veterans and newcomers alike, Last Epoch will have you mastering over a dozen unique and frankly rad-sounding classes like Void Knight, Beastmaster, and Blade Dancer. Branch out across tons of skill trees, dive into the community-revered crafting system, and hunt for rare and powerful loot by yourself or alongside your closest ARPG pals. Last Epoch is easy to learn and hard to master, just like playing the saxophone. And Last Epoch's deep and continually evolving endgame means that there's no curfew on this dungeon crawl, unlike my saxophone playing. I have to stop by seven. Mm. Pre-order standard, deluxe, or ultimate editions today to make sure you have access to tons of goodies like the Temporal Guardian armor set, pet cosmetics to spruce up your favorite companions, and of course, a copy of the game itself. That's important. Start working out those index fingers because Last Epoch comes out of early access on February 21st, 2024. That's this year. Head on over to Last Epoch's Steam page to pre-order your version of the game today and prepare for your next great ARPG adventure. This. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Second Winds Firelink Podcast, episode number eight for Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. My name is Marty Sleeve. I'm joined by Casey, and I'm joined by Nick, and we're joined by Eric, and we just got finished watching Sony State of Play for January 31st, 2024. Uh, and we're just going to do a big old rundown reaction to everything. We got we got our we got our Sonic remake. We got our Death Stranding. We got our Rise of the Ronin. We got our uh, Silent Hill. I'm going to be honest. Some of this was very Marty-centric. And then at the end, they said Final Fantasy's coming, but not for a few days, which is the antithesis of Marty-centric. Uh, but I appreciate it anyway. So yeah, we're going to be uh, running through all of our uh, impressions of the uh, state of play, as well as stuff we've been playing, because a lot of cool games are coming out, uh, including uh, we, we got Persona 3, we got more Prince of Persia, Nick put some time in the Suicide Squad, and oh boy, we have thoughts mm -hmm. on the squad. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome, guys. Uh, and, and of course, thank you, everyone who watched uh, the showcase live with us, who's here live with us. Uh, we, of course, appreciate your support on YouTube, uh, on, on Patreon, and everywhere you support us. So thank you guys so much. Uh, so right off the bat, what did you, before we go game by game, what did you guys think of uh, Sony's first showcase of the year? I... It's okay. I, I, I still don't know, like, what their... <laughs> It feels like we still don't know much about their first party stuff. Like we just really don't. Like we don't know what Sucker Punch is doing. We don't know what Naughty Dog's doing. We don't know any anything about first party, really. I mean, this everything in this was really a lot of third party first party stuff. Um, besides uh Hell Divers 2. Uh and uh, yeah, that's really about it as far as their first party slate. Uh yeah, we didn't yeah, if if you were anticipating the Sony's regular staple of, of things, yeah, they didn't really talk much about that. Uh, but the the like they're still the king of the exclusive deal, it seems, because the stuff that they have tied to their platform does look really cool. And mm -hmm. like 
you can't get that stuff anywhere else. So like it's it still does the job of like making the Sony platform seem very attractive in that regard. Cause like, yeah, they they have games that are piquing my interest. Um, but I mean it hasn't changed that Sony themselves are still in the business of these sort of big budget cinematic experiences. Uh, and so they just don't have anything to show in that regard just yet. Uh, the, the Death Stranding stuff, though, which I, I guess we'll get into a lot bigger, uh, a lot later. Um, that looks fine. I'm I'm super curious about the stuff that comes after. Yeah, fine. Like it looks fine. It looks like more Kojima nonsense. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I did that with my mouth. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was an internal reaction, but it was an external reaction. Yeah, I was hoping to get excited for it. Like it. It, it's so much more of the same sort of energy that I'm like, mm-hmm. again, feeling a little pushed away by it. But I don't know. Maybe if you see more gameplay, I, I, uh, my feelings will change. Uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as somebody <laughs> that so came excited. very late to Death Stranding, I, I, his trailer, I'm glad his trailers tell me nothing, but also tell me a lot. <laughs> I said this at the end of the, I just, I said a few minutes ago at the end of the watch along, um, if anyone else tried to pull the stuff Kojima does, in terms of just these overly grandiose, overly long in the tooth trailers, taking up like what felt like a third of the entire showcase, uh, coming out and having these the giant it, segments where you're like, this is gonna, this is an interactive game. They all are. This is gonna blur the line between movies. If anyone else did that, I would roll my eyes and gag. He's earned the right to do that. He's earned it. And everyone always says, why does he just make movies? All he does is make movies. Every one of his games play with the idea of gameplay and play with the idea of interactivity in ways that 99% of other games don't. That dude's games are one of the most playful games. Like, Casey, when you think about all the stuff you could do in in Metal Gear Solid 3, all the weird <laughs> little nuances, gameplay things. So, yeah, he'll he'll focus on a cutscene for 15 minutes and then bring out all of his Hollywood friends to put in his game. But, like, that dude, like, understands the the essence of play a lot more than a lot of other people. No, that's fair. Yeah, I don't want to take anything away from his ability to do that. Um, but I, oh, I, I, there's like this feeling of dread that washed over me when Sony said, like, oh, we're going to make him make another stealth espionage thing. And it seems like they're going to back up the truck and just give him all the resources, all the money, like, like time he needs. Like, Kojima is going to make this like one of the most expensive game developments, in, I think, in history because. I thought I thought Death Stranding was him being able to like make his dream game after he broke free from Konami, but that was him kind of testing the waters. Mm-hmm. Like it's done well enough that Sony's like, yes, we will let you do anything you want, just do it for us. And so he's going to take full advantage of that. Well. Death Stranding sold very well. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a yeah, it wasn't like a weird like one for us, one for you thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we'll uh, we'll do a we'll do a rundown of. Uh, of all the games, we'll just handle it in uh, chronological order. So we'll save uh, Death Stranding and, and Kojima for the end. But uh, right off the bat, they showed a quick trailer for Helldivers 2, which is coming on uh, February 8th to uh, PS5 and PC. Uh, the game <clears throat> looks cool. Like I, The only time I played Helldivers 1 was when we played it for the stream a few years back. I had a lot of fun with that game. I think uh, I think that it can be a super fun, silly, uh, cooperative multiplayer game. Uh, I do agree with Nick that this feels like the kind of thing that would do really well if it was offered on Game Pass. And I know, or not Game Pass, on PlayStation Plus. And I know that's like a kind of a cop out and kind of like feels a little demeaning to a game to be like, you'd be great if you were free. You'd be great <laughs> if I didn't have to pay for you. But it feels like for a game that is built around cooperative gameplay, it's an easier sell when you are, you'll be like, hey, we if as long as we all have the service, we can all jump in, which is yeah, something gotta, a lot of games have, have done with like Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, to play this game the way it's meant to be played, as the trailer has shown, you got to convince four people to play it. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot. So, and they've said uh, nothing about its inclusion in any service, right? Like, they're just launching it. No, no I mean, it's, it's think, a week away, so I don't think they... It just feels very soon, right? Yeah, yeah I, they, I, they, I figured... They said the same thing were, for Foam Stars. Well, I figured, well, PlayStation, that's, Foam Stars is coming straight to PlayStation Plus. Yeah, that's what uh, I mean. Like, they announced it for that, but not this, yeah, so... I, I think... Yeah, I mean, if they, if they didn't announce it here, it's not coming to PlayStation Plus. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it. I, I, I just don't see this game selling super well. I think the first one did, right? I think it had legs on PC. Yeah, on PC. Yeah, is this yeah, one yeah, also not guess, on PC? It's, it's coming to PC too. Yeah. It's coming to PC. Okay, yeah. but then, not, at least on maybe PlayStation. A chance. Yeah, at least on PlayStation, I just don't see it selling super well. I could be completely yeah. wrong, but I, 
you know, I think by <laughs> before the middle of the year, we'll see this come to PlayStation Plus pretty quickly. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that, probably that's a down possible. the road thing, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's hard because also you're like, there's a lot of multiplayer games you're you're gunning for. Like, it's obviously a night and day difference from Power World, but it just feels like Power World right now is taking over. And even like something like Entrouded that that has a has already moved a bunch of copies is, uh, and then we have uh, Suicide Squad, which we'll get to later. But just uh, it's a it's a tough market to try to crack into. Uh, before we move on to the next game, Sinu with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Sinu. Nick, uh, can you keep putting energy into the infamous remakes and PC ports while we're at it? Uh, we got a remake uh, slash PC port yeah, coming until dawn. Out of all the games, we get that one, um, <laughs> which looks fine. Our on PS4 still, they didn't need to re oh, whatever. Well, maybe right, it was in Rami Malik's contract every 10 years, you got to make me look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I would be an Oscar winner for Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, and then Guillermo del Totoro, thank you so much with a five euro dono. Death Stranding 2 is the best kind of stupid. He's, he just wrote a whole thing about how video games can be stupid every once in a while. Yeah, I don't think Death Stranding is trying to be stupid. I think it's trying to be uh, artistic. It, it, you need to play it. <laughs> I mean, like, I, look, I know Kojima has a sense of humor. But I don't think that sense of humor is in line with like the overall storytelling. Kojima is trying to tell you something. My favorite and thing I, about and I don't know what it is in Death Stranding or Death My Stranding favorite 2. thing about today is this is the last game we're gonna talk about, but it we're gonna kinda chop it up into little bits and we're gonna talk about it a little bit after every game. <laughs> and I'm totally fine with that. Because you know what? Now you should be the umami of this conversation. You should in every bite of this conversation, we should feel a little bit of Hideo. We should bite down into Stellar Blade and be like, ooh, are those notes of Kojima I'm tasting right now? Yeah. Uh, Stellar Blade, Tsunami Doucher, thank you so much for the $5 dono. Stellar Blade looked like Astral Chain minus a monster pet plus open world. Thoughts? That was our second game. Uh, Stellar Blade, uh, which is coming from a Korean studio named Shift Up. Sony is publishing this one uh, as well as Rise of the Ronin, which uh, we'll talk about later. Uh, it is a sci-fi character action game. They showed a lot of the story and a lot of the nitty gritty mechanics. Um, the, and uh, put a release date of April 26th on it. Um, so, mm-hmm. Nick, what did my, you uh, what did you think of Stellar Blade? My uh, eyes glazed over all the mechanic explanations because or mechanic explanations because I just don't care until I play. But the combat has always looked good in that game. Uh, I also don't think it's open world. It looks more uh, level based, which has me uh, much more interested in it because I am I am tired of open worlds. <laughs> Love levels. Yes, just give me cool scripted ass levels. Yeah. <laughs> Stop making me hop around basic ass buildings, Suicide Squad. Wow. <laughs> Suicide Squad taking strays, and we're not even at what you've been playing yet. <laughs> uh, Casey, what'd you think of Stellar Blade? Uh, yeah, we pointed out kind of how its artistic uh, style seems a little off. Like, uh, like we said, this is the first time uh, it's a studio. Uh, it seems like they are leaning very heavily on uh, probably stuff that you can get access to easily with Unreal. So like the world looks very unreal, but then like the characters, I think they put some time and energy into making them the way they wanted to. So I think that's maybe what we're getting there. Uh, But yeah, the the storytelling, uh, I didn't really get a sense of what this game is supposed to be about. And um, it's it seems poorly acted, honestly, like from the trailer. Actually, felt poorly acted. No, no, I didn't feel like I I thought it was like sort of charming. Uh, the acting felt very stilt. Yeah, stilt like it, 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 but it that just like, might be the that might just be the English VO. Like if you play it, and I'm sure in original language of Korean, usually it doesn't feel like that. I mean, I wouldn't know because I don't speak Korean. <laughs> you guys, so, the problem is, is uh, I play problem, Yakuza no, in Japanese. I think the problem is the acting was fine, and then Death Stranding Two came along, and you're no, like, "No, that is this definitely is not acting. <laughs> this is cinema." <laughs> that is for sure not the case. But yeah, like Nick said, uh, the combat actually does look pretty cool. Um, I, I, I kind of want to see like an extended, like I want to see what a level looks like, right? Because if there's a lot of kind of the downtime stuff that they showed off, that stuff looks fully uninteresting to me. And I don't know how much of that is like core to the experience. Like they might just be throwing extras in there for you to occupy your time with. But like, if it's really just this, uh, levels two, three, four, go through, uh, you know, get your upgrades and your action in. Uh, I can be sold on giving it a good shot. Uh, a good I try. say this about a lot of games. Uh, this, if they're confident in the game, this would benefit greatly from a demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put this in people's hands. Let them let them play it. Uh, again, my my big worry, uh, which we talked about on the stream, was uh, whenever a, a studio I'm not familiar with 
uh, kind of bites off a real big, uh, a real big, seemingly ambitious project. Um, I'm always a little, just a little curious and a little like, oh, is this, are you going to be able to, you know, handle this all? This, this feels like a big AAA sort of uh, spectacle of a game. And so I'm always a little uh, cautious about that. However, as Casey brings up, uh, we, the Liza P studio, that's Neo is, that was uh, a lot of our first introduction to them. That was their first big game and they knocked it out of the park. One of the best games of last year. So yeah. uh, I'm not saying that it can't be done by a first time studio. I'm just always a bit uh, cautious. Mm. Uh, Doom Rider with a $5 dono. Thank you so much. Uh, Stellar Blade just feels like bog standard anime schlock. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> if it's schlock. fun, it's fun. <laughs> I kind of like anime schlock. Yeah, yeah. Like they, those, those two things seem separate from each other, right? Like the quality yeah. of the gameplay and then like its level of uh, anime uh, set dressing. Mm-hmm. Like one doesn't actually affect the other too much. <laughs> yeah. If some people in the comments uh, were uh, bringing up references to Nier. And I just like, I, I just maybe visually a little bit, but I just, the storytelling in here is so next level compared to, and I know it's like yeah. if someone takes one fucking intro to philosophy class in college and it's like, <laughs> man, Nier, it's so smart. Kojima's a filmmaker. I swear I have a good taste in things. <laughs> I, uh, uh, you know what? I will take any good uh, spectacle fighters, as Yahtzee puts it, over, over just hacking and slashing random shit for hours in a live service game so i'm hoping that game's good because I, I i do think the combat looks a lot of fun specky fighters uh eric says no demo for stellar blade but the deluxe edition includes 2000 xp and 5000 gold so old i'm fuck? already thinking about what old I'm for spend what it. various game. trinkets and whatnot all oh. those shops that you get to sit down at my playable waifu oh, needs to look nice <laughs> <laughs> um stellar blade comes out april 26th uh the next game was the sonic and shadow generations remake um i don't think we're gonna have a lot of opinions on this sorry eric you're i know you're a big sonic and shadow generations fan or regular generations this was uh the the uh, this was one of the uh, uh more positively received uh sonic games this was mm-hmm. it sort of married the cool sonic of modern sonic with the nice pot-bellied sonic of uh of yesteryear uh, and uh, they're bringing the game back, and it seems like it's more than just a, hey, it's for modern consoles, because the addition of Shadow getting in there and rummaging through everything, getting his grimy little fingers into everything, um, seems good. You guys don't care about Sonic, do you? Uh, no, it's not, I, no, I want to care about Sonic. I want them to make a good-ass Sonic game. It's called Sonic and, Frontiers. Uh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't hate Sonic Frontiers. I just didn't play enough of it. The, the but, Death Stranding of Sonic games? <laughs> I don't think that's a selling point. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm more I'm more on the camp of 3D Sonics versus 2D Sonics. So may, maybe there's too. something in this for me. Yeah, I kind of am too. Um, yeah, Sega uh, Sega's Sega's a weird company. Uh, I feel like Sega, <laughs> they're, Sega they're has, going all in on Sonic lately. <laughs> they love that. Hedgehog. I feel like they it's always have. Like they they've never not been all in on Sonic. <laughs> I guess. I mean, we've gotten three Sonic games in less than 24 months now. Yeah, it's. I mean, less than like. 15 months because it was um, yeah. the previous November was Frontiers and then last fall was uh, well, I don't even remember what that game was Superstars and then Super uh, now this is coming out yeah oh so, actually sorry yeah. four because you got the Apple Arcade one too and we got the Apple Arcade yeah Sonic Jeez. Rush um, <laughs> people love Sonic I'm just I don't know what to say they love the Hedgehog they love how he runs and they like the idea that every once in a while he kisses a human girl um, <laughs> they, they didn't be I don't that think human they put girl it, yeah I don't think they put a date on this uh, and if they did maybe I was just I was hyperventilating because I was so excited to see Sonic mm-hmm. um, and, and we got Sonic. Sonic five yeah. five Sonic games <laughs> more Sonic games <laughs> Sonic at the same time then releases uh, yeah I mean we've gotten several Yakuza slash like a dragon five games Yakuza in games in the plus yeah, you got a lot of Persona yeah. games yeah. the last year they just like releasing a lot of things I guess. and are all these things like selling well like no, they also just laid off. They, they announced that they're going to lay off a bunch of people. So it's yeah, Sega did some of their workforce today. Yeah, there's oh, a Twitter. Man. There is a Twitter bot. You have to I saw that today. I didn't even follow it. In the uh, uh, state of California, you have to announce. You have to tell the state several months in advance or time in advance if you're going to be laying off a group of people. And there's mm-hmm. a Twitter pod that has been created that is pulling those records from the state of California, and so it is revealing that companies are going to be laying people off. And it's that Sega of America is going to be laying off something like 60 people um, in March. Yeah. That sucks. Fucking the industry is, the industry is fucking toasted this year. I don't know what is going on. I mean, I know what's going on, but it's, but it's, yeah, it's a bummer. We need like a superhero that is 
that like fights the economy. <laughs> yeah, his name was Joe Biden, and I voted for him, and he didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part is I'm gonna do it again in November. Oh my god, we we don't have many options. <laughs> Zen, Zen, they then showed Zenless Zone Zero. Uh that's the new Miho Yiho game coming to PlayStation. Uh the the folks who make um Genshin Impact and, and Honkai Star Rail. Star Rail. I don't have any opinions on this. I have no opinions on this. Uh I'm <laughs> They, they, this doesn't have a date yet, right? No, nope, said so in no, development no. for PS5. Wow, you yeah, like that? you gonna take it? You gonna take it to the prom? <laughs> you said doesn't have a date. <laughs> I'm just waiting to grind on it, you know. God but no, uh, I, I just need I need to get hands on it because I'm like their their previews that have gone out here and there, and I've read stuff about it, and like some folks are like, oh, this has like really fun combat. Other folks are like, uh, its combat loop is very shallow. So like, I really just want to see kind of how it feels because. If this is the same sort of formula as like a lot of other action roguelikes, but it's, you know, third person spectacle combat, I might be on board for that. Like it has a ton of style. So like, I'm just super curious, honestly. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. You're, you, somehow you're the Miho Yiho expert on this panel. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, love, love, love. Well, keep it locked i don't even know how to transition down to a thing i don't have any opinions on <laughs> yeah you know what I, we, we can wash ourselves clean of uh the thing we just watched uh because foam stars was the game after that oh uh foam stars coming out february 6th like we mentioned coming to playstation plus ps4 and ps5 uh are you uh are we is, are any of us foam starring did any it of us Splatoon? Like good... I, I i've splatoon quite a bit i i mean i could see us playing this for game night for sure but uh, yeah, uh, I, I definitely it only, want to try it. Yeah, is it only on PS5 or is it PC too? I think this I is believe just PS5. It's exclusive. Yeah. No. Like, yeah, this might go the same. Oh, I guess my PS5 as... is still in here, so yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> what what <laughs> was the name of that uh, that car combat game that launched near yeah, the roller, uh, Destruction All Stars? Yeah. yeah. Like that kind of died very quickly because of the same thing. Like it was trapped on the Sony console, and even though they, I think. It launched day one as a PlayStation Plus thing. The Sony ecosystem is not made for like the sort of fun multiplayer experience. Like folks who own PS5s, are, they want the big cinematic action games. They don't spend yeah, the time yeah, doing that's this. That's not exactly true. Call, it, call Fall of Duty's huge. Yeah, Call, Fall well, call it. Has, Fall, like yeah, Sony has tons of free to play games that are huge on the platform. So just the right, well, All Stars was, was, was bad. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was a, a bad game. It's just a. It, it was a car game. Those never go. I mean, a Rocket League, Rocket League is like the outlier, but it's also a sports game and not a car game. So, but what, Destruction All Stars was also like a sports game. It, it was Destruction Derby, but I mean, it didn't. I don't yeah, know, like you just, like ran it, outside. Just, I don't know. Like maybe that just, one was just uh, like of a, a fluke of the sort of thing. Because like yeah, all the things should be in line for this to work if the game is good. But like we see time and time again that audiences don't just stick. With these sorts of things like maybe they'll try it out for a little bit but then they'll gravitate back to i guess what they're used to uh because I mean, like, the same thing happened with the the kale city knockout city oh yeah i thought you said kale city i, was like, oh, <laughs> right, I don't want to go to that place i'm yeah. gonna go to that lettuceville uh, um that's what makes it interesting that sony if they're still doing it are are double tripling down into sort of the live service plan um and and you know I say whether they're still doing that because we know that um, the Last of Us uh, multiplayer has been you know shelved for the time being, and uh, I thought we would see maybe something like of Concord or Fair Games or Marathon here. Those are uh, Firewalk, Haven Studios, and Bungie's uh, announced multiplayer games that they showed off last year. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Maybe they're you know rethinking their strategy because it seemed like outside of Hell uh, Hell Divers and foam stars everything else was single player oh, rocket league rocket league if i recall had its explosive moment when it went on to playstation plus that's when it like really exploded in popularity yeah you might be right about that actually yeah uh, yeah so i think that's where i played could, it first could ha yeah could happen for foam stars i i mean that splatoon gameplay loop is really addictive like having I yeah, splatoon is fun yeah that. So and I Splatoon mean, and, sells so many copies, but Splatoon yeah. has a Spl Splatoon is uh, made aesthetic. 
I'm going to say made by cool people, which is, I don't know who's making foam stars. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to call them dweebs or something. But like Splatoon understands cool in a way that I'm not sure. And that really appeals to the Japanese audience that I'm not sure foam stars does. I, yeah, yeah the, foam, foam star seems like it's borrowing its sense of cool. Like they, like they want a thing that looks like another thing, that thing being Fortnite. Well, it's weakest. It's weakest thing for me. Just, I mean, looking at this trailer, it's on the screen. It's just the visual style of it. It's mm-hmm. a very messy Splatoon works because it's very clear what's going on on screen. This has a yeah. lot of stuff going on. But I don't, I, yeah, like I said, all the all the people that have previewed it have said they had a really good time with it. So it, I think it might surprise people with its popularity. Yeah, I also don't want to discount how many horn dogs are out there who just absolute deviants who are going to play this game to get their weird fantasies out. <laughs> what? Well, well, like they're a scrub, yeah, they're doing scrub dubs and making everything dirty and messy. They love it. They absolutely oh, love Lord. it. The, go- <laughs> the genuine goblins. Uh, Beast March, thank you so much for the five dollar dono. Uh, Marty, when someone says that he loves Sonic, you don't know what to say. The response is always, "There's help out there." You know what? I used to be one of those people. I'm a born, I'm a born again Sonic fan. So I'm just telling you that there's the happiness lies at the end of the Emerald Hill zone. Uh, Shabu again, thank you so much for the dono. I've missed you, Marty. Welcome back, mate. I missed you too, Shabu again. Oh, yeah. I, I just wasn't on one stream on Monday. <laughs> That's a long time for people, man. Is it could be a while? Yeah, the while. internet is like dog ears. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Go, ahead. go ahead. No, Tsunami Doucher, which is also that's one of the characters in uh, Foam Stars. Uh, this trailer, <laughs> I literally muted. Literally, <laughs> muted. I don't even remember what the sound of the trailer was. <laughs> Foam Stars, we're gonna play, we're gonna, we're gonna go hands on, paws on, mitts on. Um, we'll do next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend. This weekend's Phantom Abyss. Yeah, I he is. discontinued my PlayStation Plus subscription. <laughs> this is a weird question. You're going to be able to purchase this game, right? Uh, huh. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I kind of remember them saying that it is exclusive to PlayStation Plus. So if huh. anyone has any one of those free week-long memberships, <laughs> send them in so we can play it for game night. Um, moving on, uh, really quick, Dave the Diver uh, announced uh, a Godzilla tie-in coming in May, uh, which seems just really cool. Uh, Dave the Diver, one of uh, one of our, I don't know, I almost said one of our favorite indie games last year, but I'm going to learn from that mistake. Uh, one of our favorite games uh, last year, uh, Frost, Frost and I especially really loved it. Um, really great gameplay loop, uh, fun as hell. I'm not sure why, were we watching the Chinese version of the stream, Eric? <laughs> I feel like at a certain point, uh, but uh, it looks, uh, the game looks great. Um, um, uh, the, the Godzilla seems like a perfect little melding for this and it'd be interesting to see if uh, if we get more Dave the Divers um, going forward like more uh, sort of drip fed weird little um, tie-ins like that mm. if they keep selling um, cool and then uh, V Rising uh, they showed Nick you, you said you played some of the PC game you, you're a fan of it vampire sort of top down vampire yeah. RPG uh with some crafting nonsense uh, coming later this year to uh, to PlayStation. Do you think that's yeah. going to be a big hit? Because you said it's a pretty big hit on PC, right? Yeah, it was. It was a major hit on PC and like sold three million copies already. So yeah, I kept uh, hearing yeah. about it when it was out, but had I no think, idea what it was. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, I think when that game goes one point that's another that's another major. I don't know. I don't know about on PlayStation, but at least on PC, it's been a major hit. I'm curious. I'm curious how it does on PlayStation, and I can almost guarantee you that's a game that'll come to Game Pass. Is it multiplayer? Yes. It's single player and multiplayer. Is it also is everyone the same vampire? <laughs> no, you can create your own vampire. Oh, you make your own vampire. Okay. Yeah. Can we be D the vampire? Uh, yeah, my v- vampire is called Stun Deed. Stun's Deed the Brave. Excellent. Damn it, Nick. I can't believe what you've done. <laughs> uh, following, uh, following V Rising, we had the Silent Hill section. So, um, two things. They showed uh, a Silent Hill 2 trailer. Just more Silent Hill 2, which Nick, I completely agree that it, it, it seems like uh, Bloober Team is uh, kind of pulling an RE2 remake and making this very heavily action-oriented, which is not something that I associate with the video game Silent Hill 2, which is why yeah. some folks like Yahtzee are not happy about it. It doesn't gotta, look bad. Gotta, gotta sell more copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't mad at you. I was mad at society. <laughs> yep. I was mad uh, at society. Um, yeah, was Silent Hill do like a it, big financial hit back in the day, or it's just a critical? Made four of those games on they made a two, a three, and a four on PlayStation on PS2. So mm. yeah, it feels like 
you know, I mean, I just watching the chat when that trailer was running, it feels like a lot of people's worst fears were realized that it was going to be more, a lot more action heavy, but I, I don't know. I guess you always have the original <laughs> if you want to sure, play that. Yeah. yeah. But it was just the weird, like you guys didn't get the original, did you? Like you played the original, but you didn't get it. Um, however, I was much higher on uh, what we are seeing right now, which is silent Hill, the short message, which is a full playable demo game thing that is available today. I don't know if it's right now, but they said available today. So much like this had a lot of PT vibes to it. Um, first person seems like there's no combat or anything. You are being stalked through uh, uh, various environments by a spooky little jittering thing. Um, it, it looks cool. It looks very neat. Um, it looks like they took a uh, PT and reshaped it into whatever this is. And I am extremely curious who is, who made this thing because mm. Every other Silent Hill thing that they announced last year, um, Ascension, the, the bad the bad thing, uh, Townfall, the upcoming uh, game from No Code, uh, F, the upcoming game from uh, from a smaller studio, and then the Bloober Team's remake are from non Konami studios. Like, does I don't even know if Konami has developed. I, I don't think they do have. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't I'm just really curious who made this. Who's, this who's making the Who's making the Metal Gear Solid Three remake? Uh. It's probably AI. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not true. That's not true. I, I actually don't know. I don't. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. I do not know who is making uh, the Metal Gear Solid uh, Three remake. So maybe they do. Maybe they stepped up. Um, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, they might have hired internally for exactly this. But uh, Pachinko money's got to go somewhere. Yeah, to a bunch of contractors. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it was like the virtuous. Virtuous team or virtuous squad or something, John Blake. Oh. Uh, but yeah, someone uh, someone in the chat mentioned how like I wish I could have a time machine to go back and uh, convince myself not to make Konami games my favorite games. <laughs> 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 Somehow they retreated. Um, so under I, I feel I feel that pain, uh, but it is interesting to see. You know, some of the original Silent Hill team uh, is now at Slitterhead Studios making Slitter. Oh, no, Bokeh Studios making the game Slitterhead. Shout out to the Slitterheads out there. That's what fans of Slitterhead, that's what we call ourselves. Um, and so, and again, like we'll get to at the end uh, with uh, Death Stranding 2, the tactical espionage action is going to continue in some way, shape, or form uh, with the spiritual successor to Metal Gear uh, from Kojima at Sony. So, But I will say, at least for the Silent Hill 2 trailer, maybe, I, I've never played Silent Hill, so I don't know how much combat there is in the game. But for... If there, is, if it is just a lot of like walking and horror stuff, or psychological horror stuff, that is hard to com- convey in a trailer. Yeah. And so you know, making it a little bit more action heavy just gets, gets people more interested. Yeah. So could could I, I don't know could subvert, but yeah, I mean if you're, yeah, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I, no, I, 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 Blue, Blue team making this just I don't know what the quality of this thing is going to be. I don't know. Sure. I thought the medium was the medium because I thought it was pretty medium. <laughs> wow. The medium. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how this is. Uh, no release date, just said in development. So um, some people were hoping that it was going to come out soon. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shuruken Dash with a 499 pound dono. Thank you so much. I've boarded the Suica train now. I thought I'd give it a try because Marty kept raving about it. And now I can't stop. Oh. It's like the tr- it's like a just a train where you enter and then you you go into a slumber and I and it Suica just sucks the energy from you. It's the <laughs> Mugen train from <laughs> Demon Slayer, <laughs> so it's not a train you should be on. But welcome to the Suica train. Nick, have, do you think about Suica ever? No. Okay, I think <laughs> I'm back it. on Marvel Snap Train. Oh no, you're back. Oh no, <laughs> again. Oh, yeah, it's like the fourth time. I don't think you ever left at that point. I did. Uh, Shabu again, thank you so much for the dono. How salty do you think Konami are about Kojima's upcoming uh, Aloy, uh, Aloy Cog Rigid franchise, given what they've done with Metal Gear since he left? I mean... They don't get to be salty about it. They're the ones that kicked his ass out. <laughs> You're spending as, too much as, of that pachinko money. They, yeah, as as people who were making a thing at one place and then were told that you, we no longer want you to make the thing at this place and are now <laughs> making similar things at other places, uh, we support Kojima and his endeavors. <laughs> uh, sticking up, SVS Guru with a five year old dono. Thank you so much. Since the last Hidden Gems stream was named Hidden Gems, did you guys get the rights for it back? Uh, uh, streams like that didn't weren't a thing that we were worried about rights for. Um, <laughs> can't uh, can't trademark in gems. So. Yeah, it's just um, so They're stuff hidden. like. That. Like, our streams are still called KC and Marty play something. 
Yeah, so the uh, the trademark things were more of the kind of the premium uh, series and whatnot. So that was just less uh, we won a battle and more of, well, just maybe we were going to come up with a new name and maybe we will at some point, but for it's just easy to say that. No, nah, we're, we're probably going to just stick with Hidden Gems. But, but even which is more... fine because I say the wrong name for too many shows, so if we just <laughs> stick with the one name, I am perfectly fine with that. The, the hiddenness gems. The most hidden gems. The most hidden of all gems. <laughs> uh, if you guys weren't too hyped about Silent Hill, the next thing was something I think we're all excited for, Judas. Um, this yeah. is a highly anticipated game from Ghost Story Games, uh, Ken Levine Studio, obviously the creator of Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, uh, which came out over 10 years ago. Bioshock Infinite was, was uh, summer 2013, and so Damn. it's been over 10 years since then. Uh, Judas we saw about a year and a half ago. Uh, looked very much, again, like someone uh, continuing to make a thing outside of the um, mold of the franchise they were in. Casey, mm-hmm. you pointed out how it had, um, you could tell, you like how Bioshock and Infinite sort of dealt with um, sort, of, sort of prescient themes. Uh, this yeah, like, very, like, like a political, uh, yeah. was it nationalism? Is that what that one was? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's Yeah, Infinite especially. Um, and then uh, this dealing with um, the rise of social media. Like we, we, you saw that throughout the trailer. You saw a part where thumbs up and thumbs down were thrown at a guy on stage and there were severed hands of then. So uh, I, I feel like it's been so long that people kind of forget how good Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite were. Um, they're really good. Yeah, like <laughs> really I, good. I, don't, I don't know why there's, some, there's a weird anti- bioshock infinite contingency out there yeah. like i always thought that game was really good like it had a rough ending in terms of like combat like there's like a combat theater that's like really uh strenuous at the end so that probably left a bad taste in people's mouth but overall yeah. like the the story they told like the gameplay all the way throughout like it was a really good time mm-hmm. the music in that game as well like they had really cool covers of like uh like they would do like old timey versions of like very modern music and that was part of the theme of what they were going for like so it was it was so well done like i respect ken levine as a creator so i'm very excited about him getting to do a next thing yeah this is taking a a while (laughs) yeah yeah and it got it was just uh i believe listed as 2025 is that right or was that no i'm confusing with death stranding i don't think they put a date they just said it they did not but i think i think the room yeah like the rumor is 2025 Mm, maybe later maybe even later but if there's i don't know this was the first time we actually saw gameplay of it before it was just a pre-rendered trailer Mm -hmm. uh so i was actually surprised about like the gameplay and this looks a lot farther along than i thought so Mm -hmm. i I wouldn't be surprised to see this next year but yeah Yeah. i'm uh i I was i was sold on it just from the original trailer and seeing that it's basically bringing bioshock back whatever that means today. Like I'm excited for that. And I'm mean, now I'm even more curious though. What the hell 2k is doing with Bioshock. Cause <laughs> yeah. Cause they Bioshock announced another one. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, which, we're going to uh, go back. We're going to have cloud a, chamber, cloud chamber studios making that. Yeah. One. We're going to have another dead space versus Callisto, Callisto protocol, protocol no. type thing. around the same time. Yeah. The reports for that game was, um, has been rejiggered and, Rescoped and sort of rebooted several times, so I think that's why we haven't seen it in quite some time. So mm. uh, one thing, the one thing I still am super curious about Ghost Story Games is like his those interviews he did before about like narrative building blocks, yeah, and what building. that looks and what that looks like for those because that trailer didn't show me. This trailer looked a lot more Bioshock straightforward story than whatever he was talking about before. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if they overscoped and and set it back. Sure, yeah, the narrative I mean, Legos thing was almost like your actions in this game, less predefined menus, but your actions throughout the game dramatically change where the game goes, almost mm-hmm. in like a Baldur's Gate s kind of thing. Yeah, um, well, I'm thinking it sounds to me that tells me that like they're expanding on like the little sister aspect more, where those choices are more than just a binary, more one, than two, just three. very obvious and binary of like, do you suck the goop from the children or do you, yeah, do you let the children keep their goop? I let the children keep their goop because a child's goop is none of my business. Hang, hang that over your fireplace, everybody. Child's goop is none of my <laughs> business. Uh, we then went to VR. Care. We then went to VR. Uh, the the Nick Calandra Memorial VR section um, with Metro, the VR game, and Legendary Tales VR. Uh, Nick is the VR, I don't want to say aficionado, but I think you care the most about VR of the three of us. Uh, what, did, what did you think about Metro and uh, Legendary Tales? 
Uh, Vertigo makes very good VR games, so I am very curious to see what they do with Metro. Uh, I, I, will, I will say, like, the quality of VR games lately has really taken a step up. Uh, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it. That trailer didn't tell me a whole lot. So, well, I guess we'll see what it is. And then the combat game uh, looked like a lot of other VR Dark Fantasy combat games that exist. No, Legendary Tales is different because it's about the Legendary Tales. Sure. Legendary uh, Tales is made by a studio called Urban Wolf Games. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know. The, com- yeah, the combat looks fun, but otherwise it is... Painfully generic. generic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, both games, as someone had asked, these are not first party Sony games. I believe both games are coming to other um, VR platforms. Yep. I think that is a big thing, a big problem Sony has with PSVR 2 is it doesn't seem like they're really supporting it. Like we got the, uh, we got the, the Horizon game at launch. There hasn't really been other first party things since then. Like Somehow I always thought that the way you do it. In there. Yeah, so it just feels like it is a, it is a, it is an increasingly tough sell. Um, but you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe that's how you get there is by little by little. You keep having cool game after cool game, and eventually a library shows up with that. But um, I don't know. Didn't feel like these two were didn't look bad, but weren't the games that were gonna sort of ignite the spark that makes PSVR two a massive thing. VR has a million and one of these dark fantasy hack em up yeah. games. It, it's, yeah. Agreed. Uh, uh, there you yeah, Visually, uh, visually, that game looks like three other games I've already played. I will say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's hard to sell that. It's also hard to sell VR when you're just looking at it. Like, that's the thing you kind of need to experience. So, mm-hmm. uh, stuff, unless you have a VR headset. And if you have a VR headset, you're already sold on it. So, it's hard to sell people who don't have it. Mm hmm. Uh, Lucas Root with five Canadian dollars. Thank you so much. If we follow Yahtzee's idea for renaming the Shock series uh, names, should we call Judas Social yeah. Shock? So his uh, idea was that uh, uh, Bioshock Infinite should have been called Culture Shock. Uh, that would have been and, a good one. Yeah, and so this would be called Social Shock. I don't know. It's this new one should just well, be social called Social X. Shock isn't like a term already like culture shock works because you know what that is and that's well, what the game was a, that would be uh, so on the nose of levine did that that he would never <laughs> outlive that no <laughs> but we could just call it x <laughs> x shock uh um, no, just x oh no, no. <laughs> there was a, i believe there was a dmx album called shock and y'all i don't think that was dmx who was shock yeah and i y'all? don't he doesn't shock seem like a guy y'all. who would say um oh my god it was toby <laughs> keith what <laughs> how did you confuse toby keith with dmx i don't know that is uh that's a five dollar fine <laughs> if we we're gonna institute fines for, i kind of wanted this if you're like crazy wrong about something <laughs> we have a fine bucket that is shockingly wrong Damn. Shocking, yallingly wrong. Um, Tsunami Dushu, thank you so much for the final or dono. Uh, <laughs> Legendary Tales looks like a virgin interactive game made today. Hey, people love those games. Toby Keith loved those games. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, March 22nd, 2024. Uh, it's been, we've been seeing a lot from this game. It was like an IGN first, and I think it had a preview. So, um, mm-hmm. are, are, you, are you sold on this, uh, uh, Casey? Are you, are you looking forward to this? Yeah, like, like, as, like for a while now. If it's a Capcom game, I'm interested. Like, just show me what it is you have under your sleeve. The fact that this is also a sequel to a game that is pretty well regarded. Um, I, I was very interested in it, just never got a chance to play it. Um, makes me feel like, all right, well, that team now has a second chance with all of the bells and whistles that Capcom uh, is giving their staff nowadays to just go all out and make a good ass freaking video game. And it, from everything they've shown so far, and they've shown a lot, like they're showing tons of gameplay, that looks mm-hmm. like a good ass video game. Like I'm very excited to get in there and play it. Yeah, it's rare that someone's able to to take a stab at something and have it be s- sort of because of time and money and technology, they weren't able to really like hit what their idea was, and the game didn't mm-hmm. sell that well. And then for Capcom, which I think has just been they've been on a roll and their resi games and street fighter and, and devil may cry five, these games sell and monster hunter, these games sell really well. So they went back to Itsuno and we're like, sure, take another stab at it. You did devil may cry five. It sold great. Uh, have at it. Um, I think that's cool. 
and so it's cool to see if this is like hey this is what we wanted to make but just couldn't like 15 years ago yeah Um, because even the first game uh like it had a lot of that monster hunter vibe in it and this this one seems like they they've followed even closer to it like yeah it's not the exact same loop but like the the combat feels as it looks at least as fun as monster hunter and like i'm already a monster hunter addict so yes give me something adjacent to it i will i will get behind it yeah you hear my dog <laughs> yeah your dog did you tell your dog that they're interrupting the goddamn pod yeah <laughs> Also, Aaron, Eric, Eric's out here just showing fucking legendary tales VR footage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eric didn't even know we were talking about Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> this guy's over here playing with fucking dog. Casey's, Casey's spilling his heart, his heart and soul. He's just he's cutting open a vein and, and he's he's giving you all his, his deep and honest thoughts about Dragon's Dogma. None of you care. Mm. I care. I don't know if I'm gonna play this game. If I'm being honest. <laughs> It looks, it looks like it's a lot. It looks like there's a lot. <laughs> like it's a lot. Not not enough turn based uh, JRPG. It, it just seems like you. there's a. It seems like I like the idea of fighting a big dragon. It just seems like there's a there's a lot going on there. Um, and I just I'm real. I'm just really busy. In, in <laughs> uh, are you gonna? Play, this comes out the same day as Rise of the Ronin, by the way. Two games oh, back to back coming out on March 22nd. We shouldn't do that, right? That like seems these, like a bad move. Yeah, these are both games that have actual like game in them. Like they're not just glorified interactive movies yeah so like yeah we should be supporting this was that hot shot Fuck. mr kojima kc no i haven't played death stranding or was that a push at it until dawn is it because well, well, that is game? exactly what that is <laughs> is it because it's too much game too much death stranding is too much game for you to handle uh no don't worry i no. will carry the load much like sam porter bridges carry the load from the east coast to the west coast to rebuild america but as death stranding 2 on the beach posits maybe he shouldn't have so is on the beach the actual yeah. subtitle for Death Stranding? Yeah, it is, which is also the name of a famous book in a movie. So I don't know if you can just do that. <laughs> also, we saw very few beaches. I mean, the beaches was more like a, the beach was like a state of mind in Death Stranding. The beach is a thing. All right, Strand, Strand beach. We saw very few beaches. Uh, yeah. Man, Although her it, cigarette is mad long. <laughs> yeah, real long cigarette. Uh, uh, Eric, I'm sorry, we were not actually talking about Death Stranding yet. We're talking about. <laughs> Got him. Eric, you're doing such a good job. You do great. Listen, you're bringing a new life and a joie de vivre to this podcast, and we couldn't do it without you. Uh, Rise of the Ronin, the other game coming out on March 22nd. Um, this was the game by Team Ninja, the uh, Ninja Gaiden uh, Neo, uh, Strangers of Paradise, and uh, Wolong Studio. This is mm-hmm. another Sony published game. Uh, very much looks like an open world action RPG. The beginning of it, exploring uh, late Edo period Japan, looked very Assassin's Creed y, uh, whereas the combat looked the combat and some of the traversal looked Sekiro ish, I would say. Yeah. Um, and so it seems like a little melding of those. Um, what, what did you guys think of this? Is this, uh, is, is this on your radar? Are you excited about this? I've been, uh, I've been interested in this game. That was the truth that got me to actually want to play it. Uh, with mm-hmm. the combat, I was, I was worried the combat was going to be too, too much like Neo and like very, uh, I don't want to say Neo's like super complicated, but I just, I don't know. I just never really jived with it. And then, uh, Wolong love the combat system in that, and this looks much more similar to Wolong with their parry system and everything. So I'm much more, much more keen on that. Agreed. Yeah, I'm, yeah. And I'm to clarify, curious. I want to chat. No, I'm sorry, guys. This is a PS5. This is a PlayStation published game, and so at the time, it is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Maybe it'll come to PC later on, but um, don't expect this elsewhere. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm a little curious, like how much this will differ from Wolong because. Yeah, like Sekiro, not, I'm sorry, not Sekiro. Neo was kind of like there, we're going we're gonna to samurai up Dark Souls. And then Wolong was, we're going to samurai up uh, Sekiro. So like, mm-hmm. they're just putting now a literal samurai in Sekiro world setting. It's like, this is kind of more of the same, but, but without the uh, Dynasty, uh, not Dynasty Warriors, but like the Romance of Three Kingdoms-esque. They, they said yeah. this, uh, and they said this story was going to be much more historically based too. I mean, the other one was too. It was, but it was treating like uh, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms stories more as like superheroes rather than anything actually historically relevant. Yeah, this that, and this one, like, that's a more grounded historical game. I mean, that man flies on the kite, though. Yeah, but there so. was also that's monsters. True. That's <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> remember, we all got excited about the monsters. Like, I, uh, I don't yeah. remember that from history. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Just had to smoke enough to get there. 
uh, yeah, it looks uh, it, it it looks neat. Uh, this is this is a game that looks like a thing uh, uh, that I'm gonna play. And so, um, so what's the difference between this and Dragon's Dogma? Like this is oh, Dragon's much? Dogma's got too much going. It seemed like that dragon there had a lot going on. Like you had to do a lot of things to fight that dragon. Whereas here, it just seems like I could do some hackies and some slashies. All right. I might be wrong. I've been wrong before, and I will be wrong again. So um, we will see. Uh, before we get to the, the final course, uh, Until Dawn was announced as uh, coming to mm-hmm. PS5 and PC, a, a remaster, remake. Um, Nick, question, why the hell are you doing this? The game is fine as it is. You don't need to touch it. Uh, Casey, you brought up the great point that um, they're making a movie. And like The Last of Us Part 1, it makes sense to have a shiny new thing to go alongside your media property so folks can check out. The main the main thing I'm curious about is they said uh I think it's like what remastered and rebuilt. Yeah. And so I wonder what that means for gameplay mechanics. Yeah, I mean maybe just rebuilt as in a new Oops. engine, but I don't know if that means, yeah. Yeah, I man, I I would love Did to see add anything to it. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's, yeah. it's until I mean I love until dawn, don't get me wrong. I mean that out of all the games that uh, Supermassive has made, mm-hmm. uh, that's the only one of their like the the anthology series that they've been doing. None of those, the first Man of Medan didn't really do it for me until Dawn though. Like I, personally, like that that game was a huge surprise to me and I loved it. So yeah, I should go back and play that one because I'm more happy to play it again. Me. Yeah. What until Dawn you haven't played? Casey? Yeah, I've not touched that one, but I did all their uh, their Dark Pictures games. Yeah, Until Dawn's probably the best one. In Until Dawn also, if I recall, did was purely single player, did not have any co-op aspects to it. Mm, yeah, like I don't know if they had like a party mode or anything. They did not. I don't think they did have a party mode. Yeah, that mm. was, um, yeah, that was single player. So uh, right. we'll see. Yeah, that's um, also another, again, Sony published game coming to PC eventually. Uh, like we have in March, uh, Horizon uh, Forbidden West is coming to PC. People keep saying that they want stuff like Ghost of Tsushima and uh, obviously Bloodborne coming to PC, but uh, I guess just not announced yet. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, the final, I guess the the actual final thing was that there will be a Final Fantasy VII uh, Direct on the 6th. So uh, we, we we thought that they may have shown off the game today, but Kojima took up too much time. And so mm. they said, sorry, Final Fantasy VII, your birthday has to be delayed till next week. <laughs> someone's someone's more important day uh so the uh final game they showed off was uh death stranding 2 on the beach um showed off an extended uh trailer that had some we'll say le- some legally distinct gameplay mostly uh mostly cutscenes cinematics uh that made about one percent sense as someone who likes the first game uh the first game came out uh about five, a little over four years ago so november 2019 uh we saw the first trailer for this game at the game awards 2022 uh they said on the beach is coming out next year 2025 and then they also announced uh project fizznit fizzent 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 uh p-h-y-s-i-n-t that is the name of the tactical espionage uh action game that he is making movie whatever thing mm-hmm. that he's making with um sony so project Man. uh Fizent. um yeah so what did <laughs> well we already talked a little bit about what we thought of that yeah. stranding but like what, what, do, what do you guys think about giving kojima like the last third of this um it's kojima it's it is what it is um more interestingly uh, one of the things they said in the trailer is that porters are not needed anymore. And so my prediction was that he was going to go the more action route for this game. And like, you know, they showed but the first like two things that you see in that trailer don't not see, but like at least kind of notice is one, the focus on more weapons and two, that they got rid of porters. And then three, when you're watching the trailer, there is no part in that trailer that I noticed where he has a ton of cargo on his back or anything. <laughs> Uh, Wasn't that the entirety of the first game? That whole traveling mechanic. Well, that, I mean, it's, he's a porter. Like that's that was his job was to deliver packages and connect the world. So what I'm getting from this trailer is actually exactly what I was excited about. Is that it seems like it's more a journey focused game, and more more a bit darker, a bit more action heavy, uh, and that that has me super excited for the game. If it mars though, like you get rid of the the. The delivery aspect and 
you know, even like as Eric showed in the trailer, like it looks like there's more like hazards in the world as itself, like with this, this flooding river uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, destroying the things that you built can go away. Um, so that, that actually, yeah, I think this jumped way up my, my most anticipated list very quickly having all those aspects. Cause those were my favorite parts of Death Stranding was just the journey. And I think the combat was the weakest part. And so we'll see what, what they do to evolve that in this. Yeah, because uh, I mean, it's not like Kojima's ever been a chump to combat. Like Metal Gear Solid mm -hmm. Five has some of the, the, for all of its flaws, like the actual like combat gameplay. You know, getting in, getting out, doing weird shit is fun as hell. Yeah, it took a while to get there, though. For being honest, like, yeah, <laughs> like those games have had combat, but like they they were janky in all those iterations for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear Solid One. Uh, yeah, that could be that could be janky as hell, especially if it's playing keyboard and mouse. <laughs> not meant to be played like that um yeah it's I, I again i get i was joking about it earlier but i get that some people are like uh, especially coming into the game awards shushing people off stage shooing people off stage uh after 20 seconds but then letting kojima come and build a door that his friend jordan peele can walk through is kind of like what are we doing with this guy i don't know for me personally like he's earned it because i like his games so much i so really you're do. you're you're part of this fetish fetishization of kojima <laughs> right and, I, and like, i'm he's, and he's i'm not like, I, <laughs> the only the only two kojima games i've played are metal gear solid 4 and death stranding and still death stranding the was a game that one to jump into i uh, know <laughs> came with my ps4 <laughs> but death, death stranding is a uh, yeah, like I, you know, I wrote that big article back on the Escapist about how I played the game and a game that, like, I really I tried to get into multiple times, didn't couldn't do it, and then finally it clicked for me. When it did, it really clicked. Yeah, I think uh, I've really I'm gonna let my I'm gonna let my dogs out. Give me a sec. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, I really again I was kind of predispositioned to like Death Stranding, but uh, mm -hmm. I really liked it for the reasons Nick didn't like it. Like, I think the um the actual porting and traversing is the game like the, it is a walking yeah, like simulator I, in every like sense the concept the that he was trying to convey like i find that super interesting like through what i would probably consider very boring as gameplay he was trying to get across a certain feeling or yeah. message to the player and that's a very video game thing to do and i love that like i love yeah. that kind of high concept nonsense um but Man, do they just give him carte blanche? And like, he hasn't, I guess he hasn't like gone wrong with it yet. But it's only a matter of time, right? Like, when, <laughs> when is he going to become uh, the next uh, Cyberpunk 2077? Sure. Yeah. When's Kojima going to release a game where it's like, <laughs> oh no, you Bioware, you. Yeah. Cause it's not just, cause not even just uh, this, right? Like, Death Stranding 2 is a project that I guess. Sony is wait, Sony pu Sony's publishing this as well, right? Yeah, Sony Death published Stranding Death Stranding right. One originally, and then Five Hundred Five published the PC uh, and yeah, yeah. The iPhone versions, which just so out. Sony essentially commissioned this next thing, like this next big espionage thing. Like this honestly sounds like Sony was like, "Hey, we will pay you whatever you want. We will give you ties into our movie studio stuff because we know that that's a big deal for you if you make another Metal Gear for us." And Kojima yeah. could not say no. Right. Yeah. But then on the other side, Microsoft is like, man, that Kojima gets all the the buzz. Can we pay him as much money as possible to get him to do something for us? And he's doing this OD thing with Jordan Peele on the side. It's like, yeah. How much more can you is is Tim Cook gonna freaking go visit uh, Kojima Studios? That's like, just hey. came out on iPhone. <laughs> there you go. I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, I got sent a code, and I was like, I'm sorry, my phone cannot run this. <laughs> I cannot like, do like, this. I, I, I feel like. This is this is a house of cards being built up by all these entities in this industry that will fall. Like Kojima cannot be the like something's gonna happen that topples this. It's a is bubble. There a chance. To why? Up why though? This guy said in the in the video literally he, or in the uh, state of play he literally said this isn't even starting development until after Death Stranding Two is done. Yeah. So I mean they have two teams. They're working on OD and Death Stranding Two. Like, I don't, they have a third team, and he's gonna show up during next month's direct. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! I don't, Hello, I don't think his games fit on Switch. Switch to Nick. 
Power of the cloud. Oh, uh, it's not counting out yet. Nintendo might be like, "Hey, Kojima, what you got for us?" <laughs> exactly. Like, we'll we'll give Mario's, you with money Mario's too. Stranding. You can put the Metal Gear games on here. Yeah, and they will run, very, Mario. It won't run very well, and they are so big. Why are they so big? <laughs> uh, SES Guru with a five euro dono. Thank you so much. I doubt Kojima would ever let a game be released in such an unfinished state. It needs to be perfect to him. I don't know if that was a joke against Metal Gear Solid Five. That wasn't his fault. They locked him out of his out of the office. How are you supposed to make a game when you're? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how are you supposed to make a game when they remove your key card. Key cards yeah. are incredibly important. Pretty hard. No, he 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 knows how to he knows how to move genres forward when he goes after them. So, games are great. We need people like him. We need no. We but need he, one person like him. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, don't he, need Kojima, any more people like him. Yeah, Kojima is a very uh, specific taste for people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, uh, Death, Death Stranding is the first game of his that legitimately finally clicked for me. Yeah, and I still needed to look up like a uh, Wikipedia to understand the story completely. I got most of it by the end of the game. The game does actually, the game actually does a good job of near when you're nearing the end, finally like everything clicking together and making sense. But so before you understood that, what was happening in in this by, trailer. by the end of the game. Uh, no, I have no idea what the fuck's going on in the trailer. But oh no, this isn't trailer, like. Yeah, by the end of the original It's not that you were confused because you didn't play Death Stranding 1. It's that this is a very confusing trailer. (laughs) Death Stranding 1 trailer the the same way, too. (laughs) The black and white thing, I legitimately, because before we went live, Eric was playing with filters. Make sure Barry's not excited. And I was like, did did Eric somehow do a filter where Norman Reedus is black and white? And how are you doing this in real time? (laughs) It's really impressive. I mean, Eric, you're a very impressive producer. (laughs) There it is, it's back. (laughs) Oh, no, I'm in the baby's body. (laughs) (laughs) I said he should keep the goop. <laughs> oh, no, that was a different game. Uh, and then speaking of Snake in the Garden with a two euro dono. Thank you so much. Dono for Eric. Silent visual goofs on streams. Uh, Eric, your visual goofs are um, they're, they're, they brighten our day. It's going to yeah. win us an award one day. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get a Webby. If uh, still a potty. Uh, a potty. Incredible. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts on the, uh, on the showcase before we head into uh, the stuff we've been playing? Yes. Lots of lots of good looking games. I'm just still super curious about their first party studios. Curious curious when we'll get those updates. Somebody came in, well actually uh, you won't get that until the summer, but I don't know. Xbox gave us their plans and their first state of the play for the year. So. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure Nintendo's gonna do the same. <laughs> well uh, actually back to you. Yeah, oh wow, an actual volley. Uh, yeah, like they're actually pretty comparable, I wanna say. Like uh the amount of stuff Xbox talked about that was exclusive to them uh because they even threw in like a third party thing themselves and the amount of stuff that sony talked about that was exclusive to them but um if we're gonna compare them because people are gonna compare them i do think sony has stronger offerings overall it's mm-hmm. like stuff that more people are going to be like excited about and like spend more time with maybe uh even me who like i generally lean towards like the kind of games that appear on the xbox platform the stuff that sony is talking about is stuff that appeals to me like it's even though it's like it's very single player centric it's like single player and gameplay centric so like i can get behind yeah. that and uh again oh, one game sony, you're sold on um, dragon's dogma 2 is an exclusive so. well yeah that, that yeah that one is a third party one yeah but the yeah i mean Rose sony game. still still makes those <laughs> third party deals because um the xbox is is still so weak in japan and so Japanese yeah. developers, like, there's a reason we haven't seen Final Fantasy VII Remake or Final Fantasy XVI on Xbox, and it's because they probably have the data of how Final Fantasy XV sold on Xbox One, and it's probably not good. And so that's why we're like, Visions of Mana is coming to Xbox, uh, or Children of Mana, <laughs> or whichever Mana game it was. Um, so, yeah, but that's, again, that you see Final Fantasy VII Remake, or Rebirth, uh, you see Kojima's what feels like his a team project, right? Like death stranding. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, the tactical espionage game feel like an a team compared to, uh, Microsoft gets the experimental thing. OD, sure. um, which they still haven't like said is legally a game yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then, yeah, Sony's able to lock down, uh, lock down those deals with a bunch of Japanese studios that, uh, Xbox is trying to, uh, get to, but, um, have, have not quite yet, uh, been mm-hmm. able to crack. So, yeah uh cool going over and again today's show is going to be a little bit shorter than normal shows just because just our one topic was going to be reacting to this and then we're gonna talk about what we've been playing and everything and watching and uh uh because we've been we've been streaming for a few hours already so then we'll send you on your day 
Uh, Nick, you got to you, uh, let's start off with you in uh, Suicide Squad because obviously one of the big games of the week is Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Um, it is available in uh, if you if you uh, buy the deluxe version for a hundred dollars, you can play the game early. I believe it's coming out uh, Friday. Normally, the second. Um, yes. Nick, you put a few hours uh, in on the stream yesterday. Uh, what did you think of Suicide Squad? Uh, the gist of it is I like the writing. I like the characters. Uh, traversal and gameplay are fun. The mission design is bland as it gets and all of the trappings of every fucking life service game that exists today where for some reason every life service game from these major publishers is guns, 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 loot, 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 boring, boring, boring mission design over and over and over again. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm only, I haven't played beyond the stream, but like if those are the opening missions, I know I'm expected to play for the rest of the game too. And so, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I just the, the entire time I was streaming yesterday, I just felt like there's, there's a line, there's an action adventure game in here that's been overtaken by grindy stay with us as long as you can service design and i i just it's hard to recommend <laughs> it's hard mm. it, it's it's hard to recommend and and say like yeah come in at this on day 1 at $60 and and stick with it i i have a really I was sleeping on it i have a bad feeling this is going to go the way of avengers very quickly where they're going to get through these first few content updates and that and then that's it and then Rockstar is going to see layoffs. And, uh, uh, yeah. and, and you know, the founders leaving the studio. Uh, I just cements that further. Like, clearly, this isn't the game that they wanted to make. So they left and went back and made their own studio again. I, you know, the reports have been that we all assumed Warner. This was a Warner Brothers mandate and reports have been it was not that this was a Rocksteady decision. Now, granted, the game clearly went through several iterations over the past decade. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we, I guess we don't know what the full story is, but that's what some of the reports have said. But um, I, Nick, from watching you play, I, this is, I completely agree with you. Like, the gameplay looked um, as dull as, as you could imagine. The, well, that's the, the city thing. The, the gameplay is good. The actual... It's the mission design. Yeah, and that's what I, I, I got to play the alpha um, a, a month or two ago, and the, the character movement, like being this person in the world, feels good. The yeah. world feels bland as shit. It does. And the enemies mm -hmm. you are fighting feel so boring. They're just like purple crystal men. And I'm like, I don't, yeah. I'm playing a, a DC game. I don't want to play, fight purple crystal men. Like, what are we <laughs> doing here? Yeah, and, uh, I, I pointed it out on the stream yesterday and, and Eric just showed like the, the penguin cutscene, right? That would have mm -hmm. been a whole mission in an Arkham game, tracking down the penguin and stopping him and all that. And in this, it's relegated to literally that mission is there's there's enemies spawning in, kill them. Okay. And cutscene. Here's penguin. Oh, we captured him on the cutscene. No, no scripted mission design to it. No interesting environment. Just I stood on a rooftop and I shot shit. And I'm like, that's I know what that's, this game is going to be for the rest of my time with it. Dang. And it's like a really <clears throat> annoying because I love the cutscenes and the writing cutscenes and the, the characters. Really good. The tone, like it is clearly aping James Gunn's, yeah. uh, not just Suicide Squad, but Guardians of the Galaxy vibes, but it nails it really well. Yeah. And like, the and game is, is charming and the, funny. And yeah. The question I'm asking myself is like, is that enough for me to want to play through the rest of this game? And it's kind of like, uh, I guess I could just watch the cutscenes online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad, but that yeah. this is becoming par for the course for Warner Brothers. <laughs> like they they want to leverage these IPs, and it feels like they are forcing these game studios underneath them to just do stuff. Like kind of like we were talking about with uh, Pocket Pair. Like they they're saying like mix this with that. Like well, give Warner's, us Warner's been relatively good about it though because like metal earth shadow of war and shadow of mordor are both great i mean those are pretty One, old though <laughs> yeah but i mean yeah yeah well war, we were talking about on stream yesterday warner brothers does not have aside from their mobile games warner bros does not have a active live service game that the rest of the publisher has they do not have their golden goose yet and maybe uh, that's what this was supposed to be like maybe well, 
But yeah, of course it was. <laughs> but right, and, I, and maybe it's the case because, like Marty was saying, like yeah, they were saying like WB didn't like force them, but maybe it was known like WB wanted one, and maybe Rocksteady was like, hey, we can do that. Like we can turn this thing into that thing, and then over time realized that it was probably a lot more difficult. Uh, and like maybe it maybe just turned into this because yeah, it it does seem like from what I can tell, there's a lot of time and energy put into the cinematics and the story and the characters. But then everything around them seems like more last minute. Like that stuff maybe came after some turmoil. Hexton, and it just had to get something uh, out. Hex and Tamaris is Warner Bros. published Cyberpunk 27. Uh, not sure. They published it. They were the distribution partner for Cyberpunk 2070. They did not publish it. There you go. So I didn't even know yeah. they were connected to it at all, if we're being honest. Yeah, they, they um, were the distributor, publisher, distributor for it in the United States. But not okay. they didn't like fund development fact. of yeah. That's uh, fun fact right there. Um, yeah, yeah, it, I, 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 uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious how the live service stuff builds up on it. But I mean, we there were things we were, we were excited about for the Avengers live service part, and they ended up being like what two or three missions, and then that was like the expansion yeah, basically. Really short. Not a Spider-Man and, for PlayStation fans only. That was just not a fun Spider-Man. And it was like, I'd rather be Spider-Man than the other Spider-Man game that you guys make. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, kind of what I'm getting the vibe from this. Because even though even though they showed the Joker gameplay, it was still the same mission structure. Even sure, in that sure. Sure. trailer. Yeah. Um, Shabu again. Thank I you need so to make sure Barry has not escaped my yard. Oh, yeah. No, fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Nick, uh, when we get paid tomorrow, Nick has already told me the first thing he's buying is new fence. Because his dogs have figured out how to escape. The oh, penitentiary no. of his backyard. <laughs> uh, Shabu again with the dono says, is the game a sales success so far? So the game isn't technically out till Friday. It is. You can mm-hmm. buy a hundred dollar deluxe version to play the game early, or you can just wait till Friday like a like a normal human. I don't want to say if you bought a hundred dollar human year. being. I bought the early version of Prince of Persia Lost Crown to play it early. It was, that was an extra ten dollars, and let me tell you, well worth it. I didn't give a hmm. shit about any of the stuff. They were like, here's a costume. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I want to dress. I like I like the design of your character. I don't need to dress up as anything else. Um, so uh, yeah, Nick, we're just talking about the super chat of uh, has the game been a sales success so far? We don't know yet. Uh, I don't think it will be. If I'm going to be honest, um, it, will, it also yeah, seems it can't, it's it can't a, be. It, it can't be. That's a now a weird yet, lightning rod yet. of of hardcore fans who have convinced themselves they're going to love this game saying how dare journalists not like the game yeah like there's like this game has become a culture war and i'm like we're having a culture war over this <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah there's a level of spite involved in people who are getting behind it but if i'm gonna be honest there also does seem to be a level of spite involved with some of the people who are against it <laughs> like oh yeah like, I mean, it's kind of like Starfield. There's emotions being thrown around. Like Starfield was a game where it's like, if you either do or don't like this game, that is a that is an actual personal trait of yours <laughs> that you need to take a look at. Like, or you can well, just I mean, like, there's like people, the game. yeah, there's people legitimately mad over the ending of the game and and that you kill the Justice League, and it's like, well, I guess you uh, missed that title there, sir. That also, you were too good. And, you were too good at the game. Yeah, just so yeah. be bad at the game. The Justice League will probably kill you. Apparently, if you leave the out of bounds thing and you keep going, uh, Amanda Waller detonates the thing around you. That's neck. fun. That is a <laughs> no. That it's is not a cool. Fun. No, that is no, I, that's a cool a, idea. One time, it's fun. <laughs> that's yes. a good in-universe boundary. That is a. That's one of those ideas where if you're spitballing ideas for a thing, you're like, "Ooh, that's a good one." Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we need it for the game, but yeah. Uh, and then Ark, thank you so much for a twenty dollar donation. Thank you so much, Ark. Got to stop being a phoenix for a little bit, but I wanted mm-hmm. to give one last dono. Huge props for everyone's work, and I look forward to supporting y'all more. Big hype for everyone supporting Phoenix Win. Thank you so much. And look at that. You. A, did you see a hand come out? Is yeah. that me? Yeah. What the my, f was that about? Is that a, just get it out of here. Oh. This is like a warrior wear. That's not my hand. These are my hands. These are my like, hands. What are you talking about? And I looked up, I was like, oh, there it is. Um, thank you so much for uh, Eric said if someone donated $10, he would pet Marty, which I liked. That was very nice of you, Eric. Uh, and thank you so much, Eric, uh, for the dono. And totally understandable. Listen, life, life, so, so life comes can... around. Uh, uh, bills, bills come. Life, life uh, events come. Uh, people have to people have to drop off Phoenix tier. People have to knock it down. We we understand that. Like 
as someone who hasn't been paid in several months, I had to stop doing some things. And let so me tell you, you, I kept doing a lot of the things and it's been bad. So I'm very you just excited. Got, to uh, you just got handied on Twitter, but I can't use the soundboard. I got handied on Twitter, but you can't use a soundboard? Yeah. What does handied on Twitter mean? Why did I say Twitter? I'm fucking. I don't know why you said Because you always think about Twitter. But and I also don't know why you said between, he got handied. <laughs> there is a difference between yeah, we gotta there, talk there, about this handy. There There's a difference there a between handied a on you. visual goof <laughs> and an audio thing that interrupts <laughs> someone's flow when they're trying to describe the show. There's a, there's a big difference because you could choose to ignore a visual thing. Hard to ignore audio. Also, the hand thing is very nice. But Art, <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you so much. And listen, if you can't, we understand if you can't be uh, if, you, if you can't be a paying member, just your your support, your positive vibes, your your liking. Honestly, a thumbs up, watching a video to the end, that does yeah. a lot. It really, that really helps out. So we uh, we 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 greatly appreciate that. Uh, that was as close as we will ever say to like and subscribe. <laughs> I'll say like I literally told people to stop fighting in the Discord and instead to like and subscribe oh, no. uh, earlier because they were fighting over liking and subscribing. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, you can do both. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nick, you've been playing, watching anything else? No. That's have what, I? You don't have to. I don't know what I've been doing. What have I been doing? Oh, I've been playing Serial Six Siege again. I haven't. I, I'm addicted again. Nice. Glad Marvel Snap and Rainbow Six Siege. Oh my god, you got really lots of pets, Marty. You got lots of pets coming. You you <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> you got some heavy petting coming your way. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's like a good. <laughs> what have you done, Eric? Why is um, this hand blue? <laughs> what is this, an avatar? <laughs> Robo, protect me. <laughs> protect me from the. Oh, it should be almost. Oh, you no, know, it worked. He's protecting you. He's taking your pets for you. <laughs> this is just weird. It is a chaotic. Uh, this, this is avant garde. Uh, so you've been playing more Rainbow Six, and you've been. It's good. Like you're still smashing those walls and everything. Yes. Uh, also, like every time I come back to it after a few months of not playing it, the meta has completely changed, and I just look like that guy standing in the field, going, "Where, where is everything?" <laughs> oh no, the meta. Yeah. You're welcome. But I was on stream with you. Like the over there. <laughs> yes. Just the meta. Ah. Uh, uh, Get off me. Is there new levels or what's going on over there? Uh, yeah, there's a new map, new That's characters. Cool. And every time there's a new character, the meta changes. Also, like if I don't play for a few months, people choose their initial spawn location differently for the objectives and it annoys the hell out of me. You got to so, get up like, to date. Like yeah. instead of bomb, like the original bomb room, it'll be moving to the new bomb room. And then I'm like, where is my drone going? I don't know. Frustration ensues. I feel your pain. I don't understand mm, it at no. all, but I empathize with you. <laughs> I don't understand what any of those words meant, but I hope you either blow up the building or disarm the bomb and the, the, stop the people from blowing up the building. Yes. Uh, Reaper's Grim, thank you so much for the 10 Canadian dollars. I believe that's what instigated the petting. Uh, and then uh, David Dubois, $10 dono to pet Marty. And then Quintuple, a, a $30 dono. I don't even know this is technically possible. Quintuple, can you pet all three? I don't Neither. think that's... I don't really. Like, yeah, I don't think Eric has enough hands for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like literally, he's gonna be, he's gonna be Goro. <laughs> he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to put one on me, one on the two of you, and he's gonna have to control shift, and then somehow <laughs> find a way to move the mouse both left and right at the same time. He could, if, if there's uh, anyone who could do it, that's Eric. I believe in you. Full. Oh, it already uh, happened. Uh, oh, oh, oh no, they're coming. <laughs> The hands are on their <laughs> way. Oh, okay. This hand is just spear fingering folks and now. <laughs> to to people listening uh, at home on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and your favorite po Apple Podcast services, if you watch the video, you get visual gags like Eric putting severed hands into frame to pet us at our desks, and it's very nice. I'm gonna say, I like. God damn it! <laughs> I hate this. So very good, Eric. Very good. Without uh, Casey, no, you weirdo. <laughs> you very, weirdo. Very good. Um, <laughs> My uh, my uh, week has been uh, spent. Uh, I finished Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. Excellent game. Didn't Sweet. outstay its welcome. Just really, really fun and challenging and introducing uh, interesting new uh, gameplay wrinkles. Yeah, man, I looked up in the game. stream and I saw your hand, and then I was confused that it wasn't your. That no, your I had my I have my own hands. We're able to okay. do it as well. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just a really, a really great, uh, a really great revitalization of the series and just a really fucking great Metroidvania, honestly, top to bottom. Uh, there's still a bunch of, there's, there's uh, some challenge rooms and stuff I haven't done. And I love the challenge rooms. The challenge rooms are a, either really interesting puzzles 
or be really crazy hard platforming things like those sort of uh hollow knight like the floor and ceiling are spikes for a very long time and you need to yes. get through an area by like doing very precise platforming. Uh, but uh, I loved it because the game feels really good and it also runs great. I played the entire thing in handheld mode on Switch, ran perfectly. Um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of that game. It's, it's maybe my favorite game of the year so far. And that, I know it's like, it's Marty, it's one month into the year, but there've been three bangers so far for me. So um, yeah, just really, really big fan of uh, Prince. Pretty Richard. much, pretty much every Every game that's come out so far besides Suicide Squad seems to have been <laughs> really good. Yeah, and I mean, tomorrow, we're going to talk about more of them, but... in- Yeah, tomorrow's going to be interesting with the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Yeah, which see, we, see we just got code for today, so we'll, we'll jump into that and see um, see how that is. Casey, have you got a chance to play any Tekken? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I have not, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been watching stuff about Tekken and listening to some friends play a lot of Tekken. Um, and man, people are very much enjoying it. <laughs> like, yeah. so I, I kind of, I'm kind of thinking like, should I, should I like put some energy into Tekken? Cause I'm still of the mindset that Tekken feels the most basic of like all these, uh, fighters that have come out recently. Yeah. It's, it's the easiest to like button mash to hell, but like there, of course there are skill involved if you like know, um, what you're doing, but I, I like where you have to put in at least a little effort to, sure. to get some rounds. Yeah, you can't be. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, again a lot of just a lot of these big games like Tekken's the beginning huge scores. Obviously, uh, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth got really great reviews. I believe it's the highest reviewed game in the series uh, up to this point. Uh, I've been chipping away at that. It is, it is a big, beefy adventure with a lot of interesting side quests and diversions. And so, uh, I've been doing a lot of that. I believe I'm uh, well. I'm on, I'm on a, a pivotal chapter halfway through the game where a lot of things change. But uh, I'm still really digging it. Um, Nick, have you been, have you played it all the last couple of nights, or have you? Um... Uh, no, I are you going to keep playing it? Like, do you think you're going to finish it? Yeah, yeah, I'll finish okay. it. Uh, I mean, I'm <laughs> I've put 20 hours into it, so you know, might yeah. as well finish it at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like the I th- it's like chapter seven where things get like really interesting. Yeah, they get real spicy, and by then they've introduced most of the various side quests and mini games. Like that's yeah. I, chapter six is where you get the. The Animal Crossing esque uh, island mini game. Uh, yeah, I wanted out of that as fast as I could get. Uh, Quintuple said that they, when they got there, they did not leave the island until they did everything and got five Jeez. stars. And so they spent eight hours on the island. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is very funny. Um, but yeah, the reason uh, I kind of haven't played a bunch of it the last couple nights is because we got code for um, Persona 3 Reload, which I've, I've put about 25 hours into now. Um, Damn, that was fast. Weekend, since the weekend. My, my, this is the one game when, when Persona comes along, I'm like, I'm going to see how these kids are doing. And then eight hours go by and I'm like, <laughs> my family has left me. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no one. I have no one except the kids. Uh, the, game is, the game is really good. Uh, I, wrote a, I wrote a piece that uh, went up on our Patreon to everyone. So I'm going to link it here. So even if you're not a member, since we got pre-release code, we wanted to send this, uh, uh, make this public. Uh, but I wrote a piece how, despite my love of Persona 3, or of, of Persona as a franchise, like I, I fell for it in Persona 5. I went back and played 4 Golden. I played all this, the the um, the knockoffs, or the, the side ones. I played, uh, I dungeon crawled in Persona Q. I played fighting game campaigns in the arena games. I played dancing game campaigns, and I don't want to play dancing games. I played a Muso in Strikers, and I don't want to play a Muso. Um, I went back and played Persona 1, both Persona 2s, and Persona 3, obviously. Oh uh, mm-hmm. Both versions of it. I played Fez, and I played uh, Persona 3 Portable. Persona 3 never gelled with me. It felt to me, despite being the third game, technically the fourth game, since 2 is 2 games. This is a very confusing series. Um, it felt like the way when we talk about Assassin's Creed 1 or Uncharted 1, where it felt like a proof of concept. Right. That they then refined and just made every aspect of better in Persona 4 and then Persona 5. And so it was always hard for me. I always liked Persona 3, but I never loved it. Um, what Reload does is it takes all of the good things about Persona 3, which is its its story and its atmosphere and its, its characters, uh, but then adds all of the quality of life bells and whistles of Persona 4 and 5. It is it is much more fun to play. The world feels more alive. Everything is uh, everything is faster. Everything is more convenient. Uh, and I've been having an absolute blast so far. And I'm like, this is finally, I'm now understanding why everyone loves it. It's the Danny DeVito thing of like through tears being like, I finally get it. And it's me. <laughs> I finally get it. Um, so nice. um, yeah, I'm really, really loving it. Going to play more. 
you sweet the fact the fact like between final fantasy and that the fact that like you go through and play like every possible iteration of anything related to those franchises even as a big fan of halo i have never done that <laughs> like i haven't it's, gone back uh, and played like the the mobile games like spartan assault or anything yeah That's it's funny. like a it's a diagnosis. Yeah, this is some type of diagnosis. I talked about it with professionals. Don't worry. <laughs> don't you worry about that, Nick. Um, oh, I, don't but, know, yeah. I don't know why you go to therapy. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just to be like, I need someone to talk about um, Persona, and they can't say no for an hour. So there you go. Um, so yeah, I'm a big... Uh, it's just when I was saying it's been a really good start to the year is um, between Prince of Persia, Yakuza, and Persona. Just a bunch of games I've really loved. And then you have like Power World, which is out here fucking, I think they said at this point, what is it, like 19 million copies between Game Pass and uh, Steam? Damn. Absurd. Well, you play more? Uh, yeah, people, people playing I, I it on Xbox Power haven't World. sold yeah. 19 million copies. Yeah, between, well, no, Just... 19 million copies between copies sold on Steam and I believe they said 12 million sold on Steam and 7 million on Game Pass. Oh, they so went, they said 12 million sold. sold on Steam now? I believe so. I believe that's what they said. Why? Well, I missed that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Um, Casey, have you been playing any more Power World? You've been playing uh, I have, yes. I, I have been playing more Power World. Tell us about it. Um, it's still the same loop, except uh, you get more stuff. And, like, that, it's exciting. Because all you, all you ever really want to do is collect the creatures. Right? Like, that's the whole draw of creature collector. But the fact that, they like, they gamify it because, even though it's a game, they gamify it because those creatures help you build things in your base that will then help you go out and uh, catch more creatures and get strong enough to like deal with uh, other situations like enemies and whatnot that come through. So it is fun. Like with all the, the hubbub about how everybody stole my word. <laughs> Nick, you did not create that word. <laughs> I'm taking credit for it anyway. <laughs> well, with all, with all the talk about, you know, how soulless it is and how corporate it is, all that stuff, like all that is true. doesn't change the fact that they, even accidentally stumbled across a formula that is fun. Yeah. And like and there's funny stuff in Power World. Like like they, they have uh folks have already seen this, I think, but there's a there's a pal in the game that is basically like a, a sex pervert. <laughs> yeah. So isn't that the 69th one too? Like, yeah, and it's the 69th deck? one in the pal deck. So like clearly someone has a sense of humor who's behind the behind this stuff. Yeah. Like it 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 is acting as a satire. Like it has a sense of humor about the fact that it's a Pokemon derivative. Sure. sure. Because it's com it's commenting on that fact. Like this reminds me a lot of um, Velma, the, the HBO series that folks hated because essentially that show. Yeah. Kind of, it does not like the source material. Like it's kind sure. of telling you that the source material is ass and we're making <laughs> fun of it. And me as not a fan of Scooby-Doo ate that up. Like, mm -hmm. I think Velma is a very funny show because it is very cynical towards the source material that's copying. And that is what Power World kind of is. But I, but it accidentally is just a more fun experience for a creature collector than I think what Nintendo has offered the last couple iterations. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's it's funny because, again, I, I've said this. This is not my kind of game. Mm -hmm. But I, I the fact that, like, people are rallying around this, I'm I've come around to I, I'm like kind of supportive of this um I, I like that in a in the the doldrums of winter people have found enjoyment in this kind of weird janky like yeah like it is far store from finished brand. crashes yeah, all the uh, damn time like i yeah, still can't I, play multiplayer with my friends on xbox like we have to make a specific multiplayer server that like they have to let me know, like, hey, I want to play some of my character. Like, all right, let me launch it up and leave my Xbox right in. That's the only way we'd be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, and as someone who, like, I appreciate the jank, and I kind of miss the jank, I feel like sometimes too much polish can be a bad thing. Like, I have to go to bat for this game, even though I'm mm -hmm. never going to play it. I still, like, I think, <laughs> I'm, I, think I approve of it. Um, yeah, by the time it actually gets finished, I'll probably never touch it again. <laughs> like, by the time yeah. it's actually, like, a 1.0 version. Yeah, yeah keep waiting for when, when people are going to mm -hmm. jump off it, but... I made a uh, made my uh, video on it, and I, I've I've now exited the discussion on Power because a you, bunch of people you, took my video as like you're defending AI, and I'm like I literally said that's taking away and opening and closing. also yeah came from a corporate media company that would be more than happy to replace me with AI, or they did so. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know how you watch my video and come away that I'm defending AI, but whatever. It's uh, defending AI. Come from nah. me. 
it comes from the internet. <laughs> I love Power World. Yeah, it's a uh, no. It's it's I again my uh, final statement in that video is like I hope they finish this game and boy, twelve uh, twelve million copies sold gives you enough money to hire uh, an entire triple A quadruple A team to finish this thing. Maybe they can poach some game freaks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of those game freak leaks. <laughs> See, do you think that's what they call themselves, the little freaks? <laughs> <laughs> like internally, yep. The little freaks. Uh, Sinu with the $10 dono. Thank you so much. Can we get the Monty Python foot to play at the end of the stream? Eric, I don't know if you know what that is, but you, your challenge has been uh, the gauntlet. Has oh, been he so was ready. Right there. <laughs> he was absolutely ready. He that Super Jack a little while ago, so I think he's, I think he's been planning that. Uh, and then Jack DeGhetto with a $20 dono. Thank you so much, Jack. Two years ago, Nick gave me the following advice if I wanted to get into the games industry. Reach out to everyone you'd like to work with. Tonight, a project I worked on was featured in State of Play. Hey, Thanks, awesome. Nick. Oh, wow. That okay. fucking rules. I love that. Look at look at you, Nick, giving, giving good advice. Um, okay, let's not make that video that I wrote. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> wow. Shots fired, Marty. Shots fired. I still don't think you should make the video, <laughs> uh, Jack. That is uh, that is really awesome to hear. I'm 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 fucking glad about that, Jack. That that rules. That must be really yeah. exciting too to see a thing you made like featured in a big old showcase that a million people are watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I did I did write up a whole script about uh if you want to get into games writing, I'm not gonna turn it into a video to Inside Baseball, but uh, it will be posted on the Patreon at some point. Yeah, and I also just bit my lip and that hurt really bad. Oh, perhaps to the best of us. Use the foot to um, rub Nick's uh, lip, Eric. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Ew, feet gross. No, thank you. Uh, Casey, no, no. You, uh, you, you play or watch anything else? Before we, uh, um, I, I, I've started uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Season 2. Mm. Um, apparently That's there's great. been... This uh, is the anime. Yes, this is the anime, yes. Uh, apparently there's been a quality drop. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what that's about. Don't know uh, if maybe the first season didn't do well. And so in them trying to continue to tell their story, they they kind of cut some costs. <laughs> so that that happens. A lot of anime studios will do that, I think. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like the storytelling actually picked up a little bit. Like the first season felt super uh, generic. Like the, the universe is kind of generic. Uh, it just has like interesting character designs. But like yeah. none of their personalities are kind of worth a damn. Like they're they're all just so polite to each other. But the the second season starts um, toying a little bit more with some newer characters that are a bit more fun to watch. Like it's nothing like revolutionary, but I I have noticed an uptick uh, in terms of like my engagement into kind of the story that they were telling. Um, and also the even though like the animation quality dipped a little bit, uh, the action jumped up a little bit as well like they i guess they traded that off because like some stuff happened that kind of made my eyes go wide real quick I was like oh i didn't know you had characters doing this level of damage in in this yeah. world yeah yeah uh but it's cool like i'm liking it so far i think right now uh, i'm not super far in but uh i think i'm about to watch another kind of bonus episode where they they're going to switch the main protagonist from the male character to the female character yeah so, i like you mentioned that last time and i i, I think that's a cool idea i kind of like that yeah, they they don't. I, I wish they played more with that, but they they save those. It seems for just one off sort of extra things. Yeah, so like, like it's it's kind of not actually tied to the main story because they've chosen the male hero as like the main character for the actual anime. Yeah, as the uh, the the canonical lead. Yeah, but yeah. If, if you were to ask the game studio, they say like, no, they're both the lead. But like this anime yeah. makes them out as liars. <laughs> <laughs> they say that, but do they mean it? Um, uh, but cool. yeah, that's pretty much it. Great. Anything else? Do you guys want to want to wrap up for the evening? We did a, we uh, did a nice beefy uh, almost two and a half hour stream. Last last thing yeah. I remember, I've been watching is the uh, the TED show. Uh, the oh prequel, yeah, I heard that was pretty good. Time. Yeah, it's actually really funny. Uh, yeah, I've been seeing I mean, funny ass clips from it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it almost feels like humor from a different time, like <laughs> time before, like the like 2016 humor. Uh, so it's it's kind of refreshing to just kind of have a show like kind of go all in with that humor and you know i guess you know wouldn't expect anything less from the you know ted uh but it like it's it's actually like a really solid prequel like it actually it's it's been fun uh and it doesn't take itself very seriously yeah and it's the the acting is all great so i, I actually highly recommend it it's been it's been a fun time 
Not done with it yet. Taking four episodes in. I, it's kind of like been my my watch during lunch show, so I have to keep breaking it up <laughs> in the sections. Thank you for coming to Nick's TED Talk. Yeah. <laughs> Not much to say other than that. It's just a good comedy show. <laughs> I don't know if you got. Or if you like that stupid humor, if you like uh, what, if you like anthropomorphic what's, bears. What's uh? What's the? That's McFarlane. Yeah, if you like his his brand of humor, then I guess you'll like the show. No more yeah, like, Wahlberg though. Like even if you got tired, the kid, the kid actually does uh, the New York accent of Wahlberg super well. Like I, it's My one God, thing. Nick, that's that is a, a Boston it's accent. Boston, You're Boston, 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 Boston. <laughs> sent to jail. Fine. That's fine. They're, I don't like. They're gonna Boston throw so anyway. much chowder at you. I, I, I said you don't like Boston anyway. I don't like Boston. Friend of the show, Ben Affleck is gonna be offended. I don't like Boston. No. When I went to Boston, people were not very nice to me there. The drivers, are really their the, the drivers are really mean to Boston. Drivers are mean everywhere. People get behind a car and they just get mad. No, drivers are just stupid everywhere. Drivers in Boston are just mean. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think Boston's great. Shout out to Boston. Beantown. Uh, they got Fenway they got, Park. Look, I put in the Patreon update Blue that Trail. I was a Red Wings fan and I had a bus, bunch of Boston fans coming after me. And I'm like, you have the guy, you have the guy that likes to lick people's faces. You have no room to, you have no leg to stand on. Go away. <laughs> Who likes to lick people's faces? Uh, his name is Brad Marchand. He used to be on the Boston Bruins. Oh, licking people? I like that. Yeah, that's it. That was his asshole. Like his uh, shit talking was just licking people's face. Like yeah, you mean like a... in, like during sports things? Yeah, like during hockey. Like look at, he would Eric, lick Eric, Eric, other Eric, people. Put up on YouTube. Put up on YouTube. Put up on YouTube. Let's see it. How did, don't they wear visors and whatnot? He he put his tongue underneath their visor. <laughs> that's how you get a, that's how you get a tongue chopped off. We're we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna prove it while you're closing out. What do I need Make to search? Sure you as name, I don't know. Search no one knows. Brad, it. Brad Marchand. You type it to him because that man has a fake name. Shit. Send him the link to send. While we get while we do our closings and our salutations, you can you can work with Eric to get a nice licking thing. This is just hockey. You're just now we're just watching hockey. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna get the hot, whole the hockey. NHL is just gonna arrest us. We're just gonna get absolutely <laughs> fucking. We're gonna get. We don't have over. express written consent. <laughs> yeah, neither did he when he licked those people. <laughs> Here, the video is well, Here it goes. He's gonna lick people. Um. Casey, while we watch The Licking, uh, where can folks find you? What should folks check out? Uh, <laughs> as usual, you guys can find me at Sigma Gears 9 on all the socials. Um, new episode of the Sigma Show podcast. Uh, you can find on my Twitch as well as social, uh, uh, as well as podcast services. Um, we will still be doing um, the wedding streams uh, this Friday. Uh, we finished uh, House of Ashes, and we're probably going to be moving on to Stray next. So look forward to that. There he is. Look, he's looking people. He just yeah, he's it. all he's all on his face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chad, if you're uh, or uh, listeners, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast service, uh, you're missing a video of a hockey player licking uh, other other hockey, hockey players. <laughs> yeah, which is very nice. What's funny is like the guy who was like fighting him. Like once he started getting licked, he just didn't know what to do anymore. <laughs> what would you yeah, do? Yeah, he's he's hockey, licking, do <laughs> hockey players starts licking you. Like I'd play. Like, I don't know what the fuck I would be doing. Right, like, exactly. What just happened to me? Uh, yeah, Ridiculous. and then tomorrow, uh, Casey, you and I will be back for Devil May Cry in the evening. Yes. Yeah, and folks should look forward to you have a couple uh, bite-sized uh, slash preview oh, yeah, videos yeah. coming. Some bite-sized are, are on the way. In the near future. One that I edited, uh, one that I wrote and played as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye out on those. Uh, Nick, what do you have? Watch your folks check out. Uh, I am working on my next video script, which will be uh, um, live service stuff. And I did decide on a name thanks to the commenters. It'll be called Unpacked. So who knows when I'll have branding for that? But it'll 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 get there eventually. But you gotta get in line. Fun. You got you're not ahead of the yeah, I gotta entertainment. Get in line. Entertainment show comes line. first. We've been waiting. Darren and I are just we're hungry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> our, yes, the Polish will. and Irish contingency. <clears throat> yeah, we, need our, we will. We, need our we will be announcing a new podcast soon for those of you that have been waiting for <laughs> Darren Goodness. Yeah, uh, it's been called Darren Goodness. But yeah, uh, uh, my my show will be kind of about the intersection of business and video games. Uh, so I'll be talking about subjects like that. I guess I won't be talking about subjects on video about getting into games media, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> I like roasting you for that. You're not uh, roasting me. I said this shouldn't be a video, <laughs> and so it's not going to be a video. <laughs> so I think you're the one who got roasted because you spent a lot of time writing something that's not going to be a video. <laughs> yeah. 
Whatever. Nikki, you right. just not brought it up. I wasn't <laughs> going to bring it up. It is insane <laughs> that you brought that up to me. Absolutely insane. It's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else I'm doing. Just just show up tomorrow for Shoot the Shit, or maybe I'll do a uh, launch day stream for Grand Blue Fantasy Riddlink, because I want to play that too. So we'll see. That comes out Friday, though, I believe. Fuck. <laughs> I actually don't know if the email we got. Um, I don't know what day it is. I don't know if the email we got had an embargo. I didn't. I'm oh, okay. that well, I just put it in the thing. People wanted to see us play Hunt Showdown, so maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Hunt Hoedown? Shunt nice shooter. Shit. I said shunt hoedown. <laughs> no, you said it fine. I was joking. Oh, oh. Grand Blue launches on the first. So in theory, if you want to play it, I think you could, that's just tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It, I yeah, thought it launched on the tomorrow. second, like all the other games. But I guess you want to get in one day early. Or you want to shoot the shit. You know what? It's everyone's everyone have a nice mm. everyone can do whatever they want. Mm. It's it's everyone's special day. Mm. Um but yeah, tomorrow we'll have uh, a stream. At 3 p.m. Central, uh, uh, a something stream featuring Nick, uh, and then uh, Devil May Cry uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central. Uh, the normal weekend streams, uh, so at the, at the normal times, and then uh, yeah, we don't have a stream on Friday. Maybe I will do a, a little Persona do uh, it. launch day stream on on Friday. So um, m- more details uh, to come for that. And then uh, yeah, they have announced that uh, the Final Fantasy VII uh, thing is going to be at 5:30 Central on Tuesday. So I'll probably stream that on my personal channel. And I like sitting there and then pointing at mechanics that I recognize. We get paid tomorrow. We get and paid I tomorrow. saw that remote sent my invoice in. So it's very weird. exciting. We get paid. So if you haven't joined Patreon, because we're now we're pulling money out of the company, go do that. <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful. Us. You uh, yeah. you will be seeing uh we we weren't going to release a financial report, but then everybody's been asking about expenses. So uh, we will release a financial report with our first round of big expenses for January. And then after that, your next one will be uh, at the end of March. There you go. So Fiscal we'll year. do, we'll do a quarter once a quarter after that. So, but yes, you will see like the real cost of the business. Uh, probably not tomorrow, but probably by Monday, you'll see that. Oh my God. When keeping it real goes wrong. Uh, for uh, Nick and for Casey and especially for Eric thank you so much for producing this whole thing we really appreciate it uh, this was Marty this was Firelink episode number 8 uh, thank you so much for joining us for the uh, state of play reacting to it uh, as well as for um, um, this episode really means a lot to us so uh, thank you guys so much and thank you everyone for watching I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening and we'll see you next time bye everyone bye, bye.